So, Nathaniel, we have 36 mainline Mario games here. I want to know which one is better than the others. Uh, I, I want to hear your argument as to why Super Mario Advance 2 is better than Super Mario 3D All-Stars or uh, Super Mario Run or Super Mario Galaxy 2. Absolutely. I, I've got some opinions. Got some opinions. <laughs> I'm curious as to... So in terms of this tier list, is this like... It's basically your list and I'm trying to argue down. Or are we like combining this together? I think we can kind of combine this together in terms of like, we have to kind of agree on what makes the most sense, even if our opinions differ. We have to we have okay. to compromise in some ways. So yeah. we'll just kind of go down the list and just kind of figure like, hey, where do we think like new Super Mario Brothers U Deluxe lies? Uh, these are out of chronological order, unfortunately, but eh, what How are you going to do? How dare you? <laughs> what are you, you? going to do? Yeah, so let's start with New Super Mario Brothers U. I'll start. I'll put that in D. D it's not tier. a good version. It's not a good version of really? the game. Really? But it has Peachette, yeah. the best Mario character. Peachette? It has worse controls, and it doesn't have boost rush mode. Oh, I, oh, think, I think it has. You're being, I think you're being too harsh. I, th I uh, okay. I, I mean, yeah, the new Super Mario Bros. games are just okay. I think it should be a C tier. Yeah, I mean, I don't really like this version because it feels like it takes away more from the Wii U game than it really adds. It kind of just adds Peachette and allows you to play as Nabbit in Mario U instead of Luigi. Oh yeah, I actually forgot about that. They do a lot of weird things in this game. I'm not a big fan of this version. It's the most accessible right now, but. I would personally rate the Wii U game a little higher than it. I mean, it's hard to say the games are so similar. Like, yeah, it doesn't have as much of the side stuff. Yeah, I don't know. Like, what would they have done? I mean, they couldn't have really done much with, like, bringing back the boost thing. Unless you could only play it in handheld mode, which... I don't think Nintendo would have wanted to do that. I think they could have done a little bit extra. They, they maybe could have added a couple little bonus levels, maybe a different yeah. mode of some sort. Uh, even the bonus levels, even if it was literally just like, oh man, a new Super Mario Brothers U remake of 1-1, 1-2, whatever from the original mm -hmm. Mario Brothers 1. I feel like just adding a character, but kind of taking away uh, options, uh, which is what they do. Um, the, their new little addition of the the double jump or the the twirl jump in the air being uh doable by double tapping the jump button is horrid even though you can turn it off in the game you can turn yeah. it off via like a cheat code i still don't like it people really ragged on the game for that initially but i personally it was never really a problem for me um, I guess if you had played a lot of the Wii U one, then it'd be a little jarring, I guess, like the best way to put it. But the game's still fun. You know, it's fine. Like It's, it's, fine. it's an okay game. It's very average. It's an average game. Yeah. It still controls pretty well. Level design's good. I think it's, for what it is, it does its job. It's a new yeah. Super Mario Brothers on pretty Switch, much. which is pretty much all it was meant to be. Yeah, it would have been really nice if they took all the new Super Mario Bros. games from like DS, Wii, 3DS and the DLC combined it all into one massive compilation. That that really should have been what they did here, honestly. I think that would have been incredible, though. Yeah. I think Nintendo probably looked at that idea. I'm pretty sure they would have liked to do that too. Oh, but absolutely. they kind of looked at that. I think they looked at that and they said, like, okay, we will probably make the exact same amount of sales just mm -hmm. selling new Super Mario Brothers U by itself compared to doing new Super Mario Brothers All-Stars. Oh, and just absolutely. combining everything. Because yeah. they're all basically so similar that including four of the games or five of the games into one is not really going to be as much, like, it, it, not it isn't going to make much of a difference to most people. Yeah, it was, it's interesting because um, there was, you know, a couple years back I was looking into someone that, like, kind of, busted into the game's code and they were able to kind of tell like what the changes were between wii u and switch and honestly the changes are super minimal like it probably <laughs> did not take them more than a few months to pour it over the game i can't imagine it would have taken that long so yeah i mean obviously not putting in that extra effort makes sense from a business standpoint but you know for us it would have been great to have an option to play the ds levels the wii levels of 3ds and all those games have like different power-ups and stuff so it would have been really cool to be able to use them. They did change some very random uh, graphic design or the UI randomly. Like, like I think like when it yes, shows the on the world map, better. the UI yeah, looks better. They That's changed why it's that up. The one. That's pretty cool. 
Uh, I don't know. I think C is fair for the game. What do you think? Would you rate it higher? I'd put it, it's a C game. It's a very C game. I will agree with that. I think D was a little harsh. I think there is probably <laughs> at least like one or two games on this list that I think would belong in D, personally. I think if, if you were calling John Cartwright, you would have this bit this game in D tier because he hates that game. <laughs> I don't hate it. I just, it, it is my least favorite of the new Super Mario Brothers series personally. Uh, yeah. Because I, mean, I wasn't a big fan of the Wii of, of new Super Mario Brothers U to begin with. It is probably my least favorite. It's one of those games where you just kind of look at it and you feel a yawn coming. Because, like, yeah. <laughs> we've seen so many of these games at this point. Especially back then, they were coming out so frequently. By the time we got to the Wii U one, it was just so exhausting. Yeah, which, at the time, it was kind of seen as, like, oh, this is the definitive new Super Mario Brothers game. But in retrospect, it's the one I want to revisit the least. Yeah. Um, I just feel like the levels are a little too long and not as interesting. But we'll get to that when we get to that. This was kind mm -hmm. of just about this particular version of the game. And speaking of particular versions of the game, you see, we had a discussion beforehand, before it started hitting the record button, uh, mm -hmm. of what really counted as a mainline Mario game. And, and like, I feel like there is a, a definitive, like, thing that does count as a mainline Mario game. But we wanted, I, I was like, all right, well, uh, what if, what about the Mario Advance series? And we can't just include, like, all the Mario Advance games, except for the middle child, Mario yeah, Advance 3, exactly. Yoshi's Island. Because of that, we had to include the original Yoshi's Island. Because of that, we had to include Wario Land, Super Mario Land 3. So... That one it's I objected to. Snowballed. Just to be fair. It's snowballed. I feel though. like that's that's super super Wario I game. Can't, but that's okay. I can't. In, you can't include Yoshi's Island and not Wario Land. They both have the Mario uh, title to them, technically or subtitle. So yeah. either way, Yoshi's fair Island enough. Super Mario Advance Three, the Game Boy Advance port of Yoshi's Island. I personally think it ain't that bad. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to make an argument and say that the Advance 3 version is better than the SNES one. Now, wow. obviously, it doesn't look as really? good. Really? That is... Yes. And simply <laughs> because it has more content in it. it. It has, of course, the Mario Bros. Arcade game, which is the best version of Mario Bros. that's ever come out, officially. And it has brand new Yoshi's Island levels. Like, every single world yeah. has an extra level that the SNES one doesn't. And, you know, it's portable. Or I guess, you know, anything could be portable now. But back then, it was a portable version of the game, which made it more valuable. It's also kind of like the only one that Nintendo was able to re-release for a second there when uh, they mm -hmm. were they were a little pickier about re-releasing the SNES games with the, uh, the FX chip in there. Uh, yeah. And now they figured that all out with the Super Nintendo Classic and SNES Online on the Switch. But on the Wii U and uh, on the 3DS via the Ambassador program, the only way we got Yoshi's Island was this version. And I think this version gets uh, an unjustifiable amount of, uh, of, of hate. Uh, yeah. I never thought it looked significantly worse than the Super Nintendo version. It's just like a little like muted. Yeah, it's almost in like the colors, colors are a little more washed, I would say. But, like, in terms of, like, pixel density, it's very, very similar to the original game. Yeah, and uh, I I, I kind of forget how Touch Fuzzy D Get Dizzy looks on the GBA version. But from what I remember, I don't think it looked like, wow, this this is, like, a completely different game. Like, it, it's still, yeah. like, it it does the job. It does, it, it is still very much Yoshi's Island. I think it is an incredibly faithful re uh, port of the game. Yeah. And uh, like you said, it has extra content. Pretty much anything with that Mario Brothers GBA remake in it is going to be better. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> like, that is... Oof, it's that so is, much That is fun. good. Yeah. That is good. They... they I, I just want them to re-release that <laughs> by itself. Yeah. It's just like... But they keep doing that damn NES version of Mario Brothers, which is just... Oof. I think because of that... I think this belongs in A. I would say A. Maybe S. I think in A. Maybe oh, S. Oh, man. I think S may be pushing it a little bit. I'm not sure. Mm. Maybe A for now, and we can kind of revisit yeah. it. We Once we start claiming some, claiming some bold S choices. Like yeah. some S choices that are like, oh, these are definitively S's. Mm -hmm. uh, and then maybe we can think about it. Next up is a bit of a, is a, bit of a, 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 a forgotten up. one. It's, yeah. a, it's a bit of a forgotten one. We almost forgot this one. Super Mario Run on mobile devices. I like this game well enough. I think it's okay. Mario Run is the most, like, uh, 
this is a game game I've ever played. Like, it's fun. It's not bad. But, you know, there, there's not much to it. You play, uh, I can't remember exactly how many levels. It's like 20 or 30 something levels. You can cruise through. You can cruise through the story mode in like an hour and a half, two hours or so. Like yeah, it's, it's uh, pretty quick. Yeah, but yeah. the game kind of shines when it comes to Toad Rally yes. and also going for the uh, the uh, other colored coins. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember back in 2016 when this launched, uh, yeah, I, I got really into it just trying to complete the game, and I did. And uh, I pretty much got to the point that uh, it's just like I, I couldn't do much more. Like, uh, you know, you customize your little mushroom kingdom and, you know, put certain things in certain places. And I pretty mm -hmm. much pretty much put everything i could I, I pretty much maxed out the amount of things i could put in the area uh toad rally i pretty much played to the point where it's just like it, it was pretty much point of like like what else am i getting from this you know like so yeah like i, I pretty yeah. much did everything i could in the game back then and i had a lot of fun with it i thought it was a fun little iphone game but yeah, that's I, all I, that's all it is it's a kind of memorable game for me which i know sounds super weird but at the time that that game came out was uh, it's seven years ago yeah well that was like basically when my channel started to take off it was basically when that game came out and i i'll never forget playing it and i was posting all this stuff on twitter and for the first time ever my tweets were getting like interest and, and engagement and stuff i'm like wow this is cool and i made a video on it the video did super well so in that case the game is special to me but like looking back it's basically just new super mario bros but you tap and that's pretty much it but I actually think that this gameplay style could be kind of interesting as, like, a side game in a future 2D Mario. Mario Run pretty much just took a bunch of Mario U assets and just made a mobile game out of it and an and auto runner. Um, but they kind of took the idea of an auto runner and they, they made some, like, little, little light puzzles with that. Just made some challenges with the fact that it's an auto runner. Mm. Um... I'm not really sure if it's really the cream of the crop when it comes to auto runners on mobile. Like, I remember the Rayman games that they did, like Rayman Jungle Run, uh, was like, like wow, this is, this is amazing. It stands out on its own, I think, compared to the other auto runners. Because when I think auto runner, I think of like Subway Surfers or Temple Run. And this Mario Run is nothing like those games. No. So It's pretty much a traditional Mario game that is an yeah. auto runner. Yeah. Uh, I'm kind of shifting between B and C. I don't think it's bad. I don't think yeah. it's bad. It's just kind of just there. That's just the thing. They added a cool update later on. They had they have unique playable characters. They added Daisy. You, I remember that. Yeah. You have the, the Remix 10 mode, which pretty much is like an endless way to play Mario Run. Uh, the problem is they just added it a little too late after people kind of stopped caring. There's some cool stuff in the game. They did some unique things with it. I think if they were still updating it now, for whatever reason, like, they kept adding levels and characters and stuff, it'd probably be a B-tier game, but it got abandoned probably, what, like, after five to six months? So... I would still count it a C game because, like, no one really remembers it. It's an unfortunate case. You have to give Nintendo credit. They tried. They tried to, like, yeah. bring, um make make the mobile space more refined with with a with an actual price point and not mm -hmm. literate with microtransactions and all of that but the way they priced this game while it was uh was very like like it was like oh good for you nintendo i think it killed the game oh it was it, too I, much yeah it was it was ten dollars and so many mm -hmm. people downloaded it the casual the casual consumer base downloaded it and they said what is this i have to pay ten dollars now and they deleted it Yep. And that was it they for shot the game. Themselves. And it's really too bad because they were trying to be the good guys in the mobile space. And because they took that risk and it didn't work, now we have uh, Mario Kart Tour, which when it launched was a it, it just covered with loot box mechanics. It had microtransactions out the ass. You know, Mario Kart Tour is a fun game, but like... It is super play to win. But you can't really blame them after Mario Run. As yeah. In like, I'm not, I'm not, yeah, I'm not defending exactly. what they did, but more so, like, it makes sense why they got to that point. Because mm -hmm. Mario Run, while it did fine, I think they were expecting this to be, like, this is the biggest thing of all time. They put so much behind this game. I remember, do you remember the commercial they put out with this? With that super high quality, like, live action ad of people, like, running around? And at the end, I you have, like, Mario... That. 
Mario running in like New York City and jumping on the flagpole. Hmm. It was it was a very high quality trailer they put out. That was That's like crazy. in 2016 when like Nintendo it was at the end of the Wii U era where they barely put that much effort into their trailers. It was a uh, it was hmm. it was a sight to behold. But I'm gonna have to check yeah. that out. I don't even remember seeing that like at all. I'll link I'll link that to you. It's one of my favorite trailers Nintendo's done. It's it's yeah, a good one. I'm curious. I still I I honestly love what they did with the Mario Odyssey stuff like that dancing. Um, one with uh, the new yeah. Dog City song. Oh my God, such a good trailer. I would say it's it's in that vein. Like oh, that, really? that trailer okay. is a bit cool. in that vein in terms of the the visuals. Visual wise, looks very similar to that. Hmm. So maybe yeah, that might have to send that because I I might have seen it. I just don't remember it at all. It's been so long. Well, I I agree. I agree with high C. I I, I yeah. might I might have pushed for like a low B, but I see. I I can't really argue with that that much. Next up, uh, we have Mario Maker for Nintendo 3DS. F. There is no wow. F, but it's, it's wow. awful. Wow. And the Listen. S- the sole reason this game does not deserve to be any higher than a D or F is because you cannot share your levels online. The whole point is to make levels and share them. You can't do that on the 3DS version. Why did they make this? I'll play devil's advocate here. You okay. can't do that with the Wii U game either anymore. But you could. So. 3DS out of the gate, you couldn't. <laughs> yeah, this was a bit of a tricky one. Um, I think this game is really amazing as a novelty. As like, as like looking at it, I think it is so cool and so weird to see New Super Mario Brothers U on a 3DS screen. <laughs> I yeah. think it's really think something special. It is another a very weird thing about this game is it's the only version of New Super Mario Bros. where you can do the spin jump is in Mario Maker 3DS because it wasn't in New Super Mario Bros. 2. Obviously, it wasn't in the DS version. Mm-hmm. Um, but a really strange thing about this game is the levels that it comes with, the 100 that you could play at the beginning, some of them have lag. And this was, like, the first time <laughs> that I played a Mario game that had, like, lag in it until Bowser's Fury. That has lag, too. But it was super weird because Nintendo's always been so on top of optimizing their games, like, really well. But this game just wasn't perfectly optimized. It's uh, very interesting because I feel like if they put more time and money and effort into this port, um, you would be able to share your levels, no doubt. Oh, yeah, um, of course. Yeah. And it's interesting because, like, a month or two after this port came out, they put out Poochie and Yoshi's Woolly World on 3DS, which is mm. an incredible port. That's that really, looks, really good. Yeah. It looks fantastic on 3DS. It runs great. Obviously, the Wii U one is still better, but still. It has more content in it, too. Like, you can, um, there's a lot more compatible amiibo. You can, like, customize the color of your own Yoshi. It's super cool, actually. And I think there's also, like, Poochie exclusive levels in the 3DS. Yeah. Part. And you have, like, little animated shorts included, too. Like, they, yep. they put a lot of effort into Pucci and Yoshi's Woolly World, and it runs great on the system. Yeah. And that seems like a game that you wouldn't immediately expect to run great on 3DS, and Mario Maker is one that you would. But it mm-hmm. feels like they really just wanted to push this out and just have it on 3DS just to have the box on oh, store yeah. shelves. I'm sure the game sold 3, 4 million units doesn't matter what the quality is they just knew it was going to sell decent uh i'd say it's like in a vacuum disregarding the wii u one existing mm-hmm. it it's pretty cool um but the fact the, the fact is like it's just like yeah why can't you share your levels it's like it's a core feature how is that not included and the thing yeah. is they could have done it and i I think when they released the Wii U version of Mario Maker, they didn't expect it to take off like it did. So they probably rushed out the 3DS one before the Switch came out. Because obviously, you know, I'm sure they're aware the Switch was coming soon. So they're like, okay, it might not, these games might not be cross compatible, but let's make one anyway, just because it'll, it'll do well. I would argue for low C, but D, Mm. I'm not also going to, uh, I'm not going to refute that. Yeah, if, if it were my list, it would be F. But I'm okay yeah. with D. Well, you 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 have you have the full you have the full uh, you know you have a full list of new levels included. Uh, it's okay, cool to see the game run on 3DS. It's it works well to make levels on it. The touch screen is nice. I will yeah. say it's the thing. It's not as good as the Wii U, and it's not even the 3DS's fault. It's because I have a 3DS right here. 
it's because the screen is so tiny. So when you're trying to like, you know, draw or, or make your levels, your hand's blocking the screen half the time where it's not mm -hmm. as much of a problem with the gamepad. So I, I, I would make the argument for low C, but I'm okay with D Ooh, where it settle belongs. With D. Yeah. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Now, we uh, we actually move into a game that is a little easier to discuss, uh, mainly because yeah. it actually fits the bill of mainline Mario game. I, I feel like some of the, pretty much all the games that we've discussed so far, uh, you can make the argument they don't count. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Mario Galaxy 2. I, I think at this point, the question is S or A. This is S, I would say. There is virtually no flaws with Mario Galaxy 2 because you got Yoshi, First off, way more galaxies. Um, controls basically the same as the first game, which is fantastic because that game controlled really well. The final boss isn't quite as good in this in the second game compared to the first one, but just having the extra galaxies plus the uh, the post game is way way better. And I know some people don't like the green stars in Galaxy Two. I think it's much more interesting than just replaying the game as Luigi to get to the 121st star. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's S for me, at least. Yeah, I would say it's still S. I mean, like, I'm, I'm a Mario Galaxy 1 guy in comparison to Mario Galaxy 2. But yeah. when I played Mario Galaxy 2, it, you know, like, obviously, it was still absolutely incredible. It's just more so, like, when I compare the two, uh, I just prefer Mario Galaxy 1. Though I still think Mario Galaxy 2 is, like, a 10 out of 10 game. They're both 10 out of 10s. It's very interesting to see 3 Mario kind of go on this like uh journey down like more linear style uh kind of like starting with mario galaxy and then seeing how that progresses with mario galaxy 2 and then 3d land 3d world mm -hmm. all of that and i think mario galaxy 2 like really hit that sweet spot of like hey this still feels like a traditional 3d mario game but it is like still pretty linear like just like hey level based instead of just like objective based hey do something in this world i think it just feels really awesome the level design in this game is outstanding it's incredible the power-ups also you get the cloud flower in mario galaxy 2 which is very very broken but it's just so much fun to use because not only of course you get the cloud as like an extra platform up to three times but the, your long jump is increased your jump is higher so it alters your control and they even bring back galaxy 2 brings back all the galaxy 1 bosses which is one of the best parts of the first game so they even have all that in there, too, and they bring back, like, previous galaxies, throwback galaxy. We get some Womp's Fortress in Galaxy 2. I I absolutely love the second game. And, you know, I like the first one because the Comet Observatory is a lot more interesting as a hub world compared to Starship Mario. But, yeah. It's one of those things where I feel like when I talk about one of the Galaxy games, I'm always comparing it to the other one. That's my argument <laughs> yeah. for making cases about it. Uh, it's more of like a... I think Galaxy, uh, Galaxy 1 and 2 are more of like a two-course meal. It's more so yeah, about just exactly. like, hey, you know, you, you should just have both, pretty much. Um, mm -hmm. though, it's something, even though they're so similar, they also aren't. And I think that's what's really cool, is the fact that like, yeah, Mario Galaxy 2 is still more Mario Galaxy 1, but it also isn't. Like, the way it's designed is fundamentally different. It is a yeah. different game. And I think it just makes it that much more interesting because they're both really good at what they both do. I would yeah. say this is an S. Definitely do you think? S. Do you think they should do a Mario Galaxy 3? I mean, obviously, I would love for them to do a Mario Galaxy 3, but do you yeah. think, like, it's been too long? Do you think, like, the the amount of time between Galaxy and Galaxy 2, like, they were just, like, they were running, they, they were just running off of that adrenaline from Galaxy 1? And do you think if they did a Galaxy 3, it would be, like, like, some of that... I don't, I don't know. Do you think it would be weird if they did it this much later down the line? You know, I actually don't think that, which I know sounds crazy, but I kid you not, every time I stream a Nintendo Direct, you know, every time there's a new one, there's people asking for Galaxy 3. It, it's been, what, like 12 years, and people still want a Galaxy 3? Like, I think people are, have been, you know, want Odyssey 2, which is probably what we're going to get eventually, is something similar to Odyssey 2. But the fact that people still love just the general atmosphere and, and vibe of the Galaxy games, people want a third one after all this time, really, it just means that it stood the test of time. And if they if Nintendo, some for some reason, made a Galaxy 3, I think it would be huge, and people would absolutely love it. And it'd work. We have Joy-Cons. 
Um, you know, we got Galaxy 1 working on Switch with the Joy-Cons pretty easily. So, yeah, they could absolutely do it. I think there's so many opportunities. They could even combine, like, capture abilities into the, yeah. Gal <laughs> the Galaxy 3. Man, they could do so much stuff. Oh, that'd be fun. Now I just want Galaxy 3, now that you brought it up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just thought of it, like, uh, just just recently, just the idea of, like, hmm, like, maybe, what what if it has been too long? Uh, because, like, just, it feels like Galaxy 2 was just them offloading all of the other ideas that they had on Galaxy, yeah. and then some, like, refining them and thinking of new ones after, like, those ideas and all of that. I think Nintendo's shown that it's, it's, it's never been too long. Like, usually when they come back with a franchise... Like, I mean, you, I, I saw it with, like, Metroid Dread. It almost feels like we didn't take, like, a whatever 20-year break, 20 break yeah. in Metroid and, games, you know? You know, I this is something I just realized. I actually think they could really modernize Galaxy 3 by, you know how, like, Bowser's Fury is all one massive level? Well, what if they basically made every level or every galaxy interconnected? So you, like, take a launch star and you just go to the next galaxy. That would be pretty badass. I think that'd be great. Um, yeah, there's a lot. If they were to do a Galaxy 3, I think it would be incredible. Like, just with all the modernizations we've had with Mario over the past 10 years. It'd be awesome. Yeah, I, I think I think that would be incredible to see. Um, yeah. Even though, like, we've already gotten a Galaxy 2, and we haven't gotten, like, Sunshine 2 or technically 64 2, Galaxy yeah. is one that has this infinite amount of potential. I feel like Sunshine just kind of like that. That fits well as like its own thing that just happened. Yeah. Then there you go. Where it's just like still, still a great game, but you know, I think Galaxy just has that much more potential. Yeah, I don't know anyone that wants a Sunshine too. I've never really heard the request. Uh, just I think it's general. mainly like when you grew up with the game, it's not really like, oh man, there's so much more potential with this concept. It's more so, I really like this game as a kid and I want to see it again kind of thing. Yeah. I think that's where like a Sunshine 2 request comes from. Not saying you couldn't do more with Sunshine's concept, but I feel like mm -hmm. I, I feel like Sunshine always felt more like a one and done to me. Yeah. I mean, there's like, you could kind of take the Sunshine game in a Spyro kind of direction where instead of the flood just shooting water it shoots fire and electricity and things like that i just don't see nintendo going back to that because sunshine is one of those weird controversial mario games i guess because of the whole blue coin yeah. thing but i think sunshine's a good game i mean we'll get to sunshine but i think it's oh good that'll one. be it'll be one of the last games we talk about yeah uh yeah but uh next up we have the other uh one of the other mario games on the wii it is mm. new super mario brothers wii um i would say this is I, I prefer this to new super mario brothers u uh i i feel like it was a little fresher when it came out it was a lot more like really exciting um mm -hmm. i think it has uh some uh, I, I, I i don't know i just feel like it's i feel like the level design in this game is just a little more interesting because like it's the first time it's been done uh I don't know. Yeah. It, it is pretty basic, but I'd say I would put it in B personally. I, c I would argue C or B for Mario Bros. Wii as well. Um, my only gripe with it is, um, I th from what I can remember, you can only use the Wii Remote to play it. I don't think you can use a normal controller. You can use a Wii Remote and Nunchuck. <laughs> okay, oh, that, okay then I, I forgot. I wouldn't it, remember it, something like it that. It does make things slightly better, or like yeah. if you want it, you know, kind of thing. I I, I, okay. I like it. It's kind of like using a Wii Remote and Nunchuck in Mario Kart Wii, where like yeah. uh, I usually use the GameCube controller, but uh, last time I played Mario Kart Wii, I'm like, hmm, maybe I should try Wii Remote and Nunchuck because that way you don't mm -hmm. you know, like you don't have to use this dumbass d-pad for tricks but yeah. also uh <laughs> yeah i you can forgot just... about that yeah yeah but you can uh you know i can control with that and i can also just flip through the do the tricks with uh with the weird mode and it's not a uh, not just all on one controller mm -hmm. uh which i feel like m makes things a little easier with new super mario brothers wii um which is yeah. is a problem with the game i think it does have kind of unnecessary motion controls um but I think at the time when this came out, it was like just having that co-op or in competitive four-player co-op was 2D huge. Mario experience. That was a massive ex that that was a massive deal. Yep. And it was kind of when it actually like when it got in our hands, I feel like it was a little hit or miss for people. Like it wasn't nearly as like wow, this is this is incredible when uh, when we got our hands on it. 
Um, it was kind of like, oh man, this is this is maybe a little too much chaos. I think it depends how many people you played with because I'll never forget when I was, I was like, I don't know, 14 or 15, I was playing Mario Bros. Wii with, with just one friend and we played for almost the entire night. And it was very chaotic, but it was so much fun. Just yeah. the two of us jumping around, trying not to, to, you know, there was a lot of times where like one of us would jump on top of each other and then we fall down, you know, a pit or something. So that night was a lot of fun. But yeah, if you're playing the game with like four people, it's a little much. <laughs> it's like that with Mario 3D World too and Mario Bros. U Deluxe. It depends on who you play with, how many people you play with. Yeah. Um, yeah. It varies, but it can be a lot of fun or it can just be like not as much fun as you think it may be. Uh, yeah. It really depends with the game. I really wish, um, and I'll talk about this with like Mario 3D World, but I wish they incorporated like multiplayer even more so into the experience. It feels like they got there, but then they, they didn't like fully commit you know they, they had like coin battle mode and you can play the campaign with multiplayer but i feel like the game could have used like a lot of extra little modes even in yeah, Mario, just like uh, some Mario Brothers games. U included that yeah where it's just yeah, like hey you mode. know mm -hmm. yeah the challenge mode was honestly really fun i really enjoyed that a lot yeah that that kind of made mario u for me personally that was like yeah. that was the main thing i think a c or b makes sense for it the only reason i might rank it higher than Mario Bros. U Deluxe or Mario Bros. U is just because the power-ups they introduced are a lot better. The propeller mushroom is a lot better than the squirrel acorn suit, and the penguin suit is awesome. You can throw ice balls, and you can slide around on the on the uh, on ice and stuff. So I would argue it's slightly better just because of the power-ups. I would personally... I, I would give it a B. I would give it a low B. I think that's fine. Low B is okay for that. I think it's just a little bit better than, than you. I think you did pretty much everything we did just again. <laughs> like, yeah, but we introduced much. a lot of it. And we introduced a lot of what the new Super Mario Brothers series was from that point forward. Um, introduced a lot of the music, the Kooplings again. Um, I don't know. I think B, I think B feels right for, for Wii. I think that's fine. It's that's that's pretty good. That should work. Awesome. Well, this one I have no idea which direction it may go. Super Mario 64 DS. I will say people do not like my opinion on this game. Do you prefer it to the original? Absolutely not. So the thing is, this game is such a conundrum because it should be better than the original in every aspect because it's got all the new characters, it's got new courses, it's got the mini games. Uh, there's a multiplayer mode, which is still really fun. The problem is that they destroyed the controls. Like it just doesn't work on a D-pad. And the fact that the turning is awkward, when you long jump, you're like locked into the long jump and you can't control it as well. Um, you have to hold a run button to run. Um, it's just the controls are just kind of ruined the game for me. So I would put Mario 64 DS personally high C or low B, but it is not an A or S. I, I don't know. I mean, some people don't mind the controls, but like I just feel like the, the precision of the first game or of the original is so, so much better than the DS one. I'll be I'll be the defender of this game. I don't think it's better than the original, but okay. this was a launch title for the DS. In that context, wow, what a yeah. game! <laughs> I, man, it's so I know good. You grew up in the same time period as I did, where all we were doing is we're playing Game Boy games, and then out yeah. of nowhere, Mario sixty four is playable on, a, on this little handheld. It was. I can't even explain how magical that felt the first time. It was so cool. That is a so game cool. you would have never expected to see on a portable. Yeah. And seeing like these fully 3D worlds, seeing the 3D game, not just 3D worlds, but the game known for 3D playable mm -hmm. in the palm of our hands. And the game wasn't even 10 years old at this point. It was only yeah, eight years old. Yeah, it was old. only eight. Yeah, it was a genuinely magical experience. And I don't think I will ever feel that way with a video game ever again. Cause that, that jump was crazy. It was insane. Um, mm. The things they add to the game, I feel like were kind of hit or miss, at least like to the core game. Uh, the mini yeah. games are some of the greatest things known to man. I love Mario I 64 love the mini DS's games. mini games. They are so yeah. good. They are like so, still some of the best uses for the DS's touchscreen ever. Yep. I love them. Um, the additions I feel are hit or miss to the actual game. I think the playable, extra playable characters are really cool, but I feel like their implementations are a little strange in many cases. I feel like they just tried to uh, make them seem like, oh, 
well, we added these for this reason and, and they tried to just add value to them by like splitting the power-ups amongst them all. So it's just like, oh, well only like Wario can use the metal cap now. And only, and it just kind of makes it, it just kind of overcomplicates it and not makes it overcomplicated, but it just kind of like makes it then like, okay, well this isn't really cool. This is just kind of like, okay. The controls really do make it very rough. I think it's very doable though. You can play the game. I mean, it, yeah, you can play it, but I, I am also super biased because I have played Mario 64 in VR on my elbows. I used to speed run the game. So I'm much more familiar with the original one. So if, if the DS one controlled exactly the same, I definitely like it more, but I don't know. I just can't get behind the controls. Like they function and that's it. They function. I feel like the visuals are better, but worse at the same time. It's something where it's just like, okay. The visuals use... are better, I think, just in general. Oh, it's it's something where I, I, I feel like to me they're better because they use more updated character models. But outside of that, yeah. I feel like, you know, it's, it's more pixelated and all of that. So, you know, it's kind of like, eh, you know, like I... I don't feel like one or the other is like necessarily like, oh yeah, this is like the definitive version. I feel like they're just kind of different versions of the same game. And it's kind of like, well, one has this and this, this has this and all of that. Like, I feel like they kind of complement each other. I don't think 64 DS, even with it's like, new content replaces the original. I think it's kind of like a cool little supplement to the original. I think it's something where yeah. there's definitely a lot of value to trying it out and playing it, but I, I wouldn't call it a replacement for the original. I think B makes a lot of sense for it. Yeah, I, I'm okay with B. Like I think B is fine for Mario 64 DS and I still wish I could put it in, in like A or S because I think the extra stuff they added, like, yeah, it's pretty supplemental. Like, oh, here is a small beach level. Here is a level to unlock Mario or unlock Luigi. You know, there wasn't, like, a massive new level included. But they did add, like, a lot of small things. Um, and all the, the new characters feel differentiated enough. They all feel very varied, which I think is is great. And Luigi's so fun to use because he's got the, the backflip and he can flutter afterwards. So the characters... In general, you know, it's nice that they all play different. I'd say it's like one of the most impressive remakes from like a structural perspective because they changed a lot. Yeah, they really did. It is almost an entirely different game, even though it isn't <laughs> in terms of just like the story is mm -hmm. slight is now different. It, it's almost like it takes place after Mario 6. I, I don't know. It's weird. <laughs> it's like a Mario weird... 64 five years later. Yeah, but something. it's the exact same like, thing oh, happens again. Garden. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, there there was renovations. There is like a garden in front of her castle now. It's it's weird. And they, they add they add new levels, but they're pretty small. But but still like they're mm -hmm. they're a different thing. They're new bosses and all of There's that. new stars too. Like yeah. every, every level had a new star. It's very strange. And but it's a very um, it's a very impressive remake, especially on the DS at launch. At launch, that's incredible. Yeah. Like, I don't think the DS really got to that point ever again of, like, that impressive of, like, a remake of a 3D game on the system. I mean, it's had it. You know, you had Resident Evil 1, Diddy Kong Racing, but Mario 64 DS mm -hmm. is probably the most impressive, though it would have made a lot more sense if they remade it for like the 3ds especially since that had the circle pad oh it would have been it probably would have controlled basically the same on 3ds if they waited until then mm -hmm. but i'm also glad they didn't because at least for me personally because again you know i grew up on game boy and then switching to ds so if i had to wait until 3ds came out i would have been in like you know college at that point so I wouldn't have had the same magical feeling as when you're a kid and all you're worried about is is playing video games. I, I, I will but. say, just to finish it up, I don't trust those little snakes that tell you that, oh, the game is better on 3DS because you have the circle pad. You get your analog movement. No, you don't. Oh, yeah, <laughs> it's literally the same they're thing. Little, they're, yeah, I know people say that. People that say that are gremlins. Yeah. I don't trust them. <laughs> they're just... It's just not, trust me, it I doesn't tried work. it when it came out, because I'm like, oh, cool, 3DS, I can play it, but no, it controls I did think that, too. They did not It was it. very exciting when 3DS got yeah. that circle pad. It was like, oh, my, yeah, I can use that. That was one of the first things I did with my 3DS. I popped in Mario 64 DS. I'm like, oh, same. are the controls better? No, it's exactly the same. It feels a little better from, like, a placebo effect perspective, I think. I think turning is a little bit easier, but in terms of, like, how the turning is performed, 
nothing has changed at all. The controls feel better for your thumbs, but in the game itself, it doesn't change things yeah. much. Yeah, not really. But moving on, we have new Super Luigi U. Mario may not mm -hmm. be in the game. However, I think it's fair to call this a Mario game. It's included, you know what? It's included in Mario Bros. U Deluxe. That makes it a Mario game. It is. And you know what? I like this game. I like it better than Mario U. This is like a B tier. I think this yeah. is like on the same level as the Wii game, if not a little bit better, just because the levels are better condensed. It's more challenging. You can change Luigi's physics if you really want. There's a lot of cool Luigi Easter eggs. You know, they actually did a lot with this uh, this expansion pack. I like it. Yeah, I like how short the levels are. I think they're a really nice length in this game. They're not too short, but it, it, mm -hmm. it's just like the fact that you only have 100 seconds to complete and they're harder, um, but not too hard, uh, I found. Uh, I really like just... I, I just think it's a perfect length for levels, honestly. Like I like I yeah. like how how spread out the star coins are in these levels. Uh, I like that you only have 100 seconds. They're harder, shorter levels. Um, it, they're like you said, they're more condensed, so enemies are are packed in a little tighter. And it does if you're going for star coins, it is difficult, especially later in the game. Like once you get to like world nine, like some of those levels, I don't think I ever 100% them just because the star coins were so difficult to get. Damn that. I, I feel good for uh, 2013 me because I, I oh, 100 percent it. I 100 percented this. I did not 100 percent Mario U. <laughs> so it was nice. just like yeah. It was just I I just I I enjoyed this game a lot more. So I I I, mm -hmm. I fought against yeah. it to complete it. Uh, so yeah, I, I I think B is fair. It's still a new Super Mario Brothers game, so it's nothing too crazy. But I think it's probably one of the most uh, interesting and most uh, most fun to revisit, in my opinion. Yeah, it's a pretty fun one. Well, next up, we have uh, we have one that's up for debate. Uh, Wario Land, Super Mario Land mm. 3. Uh, have to include this if we're including Yoshi's Island. It only it makes it only makes sense. Uh, well, okay. So, like, in Yoshi's <laughs> Island, at least you have baby Mario with you the whole time. Mario's but in Wario Land at the very end. In, you know what? You're right. He's in the end. He takes the statue. He's basically, it's basically a Mario game. I think this is a good game. It's just never been one of my favorites. It is so drastically yeah. different from uh, traditional 2D Mario. Where Yoshi's Island, I think, is similar, but also does entirely its own thing. And I feel like its yeah. gameplay is incredibly innovative and incredibly, incredibly unique but still feels like it's a part of the Mario universe. Wario Land has like bits and pieces of that, but it's not nearly as innovative. It's not nearly as unique. It just feels like a much slower 2D Mario game to me um, with yeah. an, obviously an emphasis on collecting and and uh, coins and the, and the hats and the new hats. Mm -hmm. And the, the tackling, you can tackle enemies, you can pick up enemies and throw them. I think the game, at least when it comes to like, you know, the other Game Boy Mario games, it does enough to differentiate itself from Mario Land 1 and 2. But I really feel like if you're going to play a Wario game, just play Wario Land 2 or 3 or Wario Land 4. That's my favorite Wario game. Or Wario but Land Virtual Boy, pretty much, uh, pretty much Wario Land. That just, one's uh, not bad. Really, yeah. yeah. This is a good game, but I feel like Wario Land uh, only just kind of begun with this series, but then after this this game, um, it pretty much, it, it's its own thing. It's its own thing entirely yeah. from the Mario series. It gets a lot better too. Yeah, so I think this is a fine game. It's just not one that I really care to like revisit a lot. I mean, if I were to put it somewhere, probably C. I'd go, I'd go high like, C. Yeah. I think high it's C It's like is... on the same level as Mario Run. <laughs> yeah or maybe think, a little lower i don't know you think anybody's ever said that you ever say something and you're <laughs> like have i been the first one to say that <laughs> i'm pretty sure i was the first one to say that yeah it's just like oh man <laughs> it's just playing wario land it's just like oh man this is giving me mario run vibes <laughs> man. uh yeah. well i mean like I, i'd say like low b high c i think around that area yeah. for wario land especially when when we're ranking mainline mario games <laughs> I think it belongs there mm -hmm. in the context of mainline Mario games. Um, but next up, we have Super Mario Bros. Deluxe, the remake of Mario 1. This one's so unfortunate because it could have been way better than the NES one. If it wasn't for that damn Game screen. Boy Color. Yeah. yeah, the screen crunch is so bad. 
You know, this is actually the very first Mario game I ever played was Mario Bros. Deluxe. I got it when I was like five or six. When you're playing as a kid, it must be like, it doesn't matter. Screen crunch doesn't matter oh, when yeah. you're a kid. I didn't even know an NES existed until like high school. <laughs> so I thought that was, I'm like, oh cool, Mario Bros. I didn't know what Deluxe meant. I was like, oh cool, this is a Mario game. I run around and, and kill Goombas and stuff. Yeah, it could have been so much better though, just because it includes the Mario Bros. Last Level stuff. It's got all that extra side content where you have to like find the red, co I think it was red coins. Then there was like Yoshi eggs you could find. There's there was a calendar. Boo. There's yes, you versus, you versus Boo. Boo. Genuinely a fantastic game mode. How has Big Nintendo mode. never brought that back? Great game mode. And there's a calendar in there and it goes to the year 3001. So if you're in the year 2863, you can use Mario Rose Deluxe as your calendar. Thank God. How great is that? <laughs> Thank God, don't have to change any of my plans. It's, I know. It, it all works out. <laughs> I think this is an incredible package for the Game Boy Color. One of the best Game Boy Color games. The screen yeah. crunch is genuinely the only problem with it. And unfortunately, it's a huge problem. Yeah, it's kind of a big problem, yeah. especially nowadays. When you're a kid playing this, you don't notice that kind of stuff. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I played I played Mario Advance games all the time on the Game Boy Advance, and those suffer from screen crunch. But you don't notice that as a kid because, like, you're you're not aware of it. Yeah, the screen crunch in particular is like the worst I've seen on Mario Bros. Deluxe, because at least the Mario Advance games, it's really not that bad. But for whatever reason, Nintendo was like, yes, let's make Mario take up 40% of the screen. Yeah, it's always something where I really wish they gave gave you like an option. I remember like some of the Namco Museum games on Game Boy Advance or like Pac-Man Museum. Like they yeah. gave you the oh option to like, God. they gave you the option to like, play a zoomed in version of the maze on Pac-Man yes. or super zoomed out. And it's like this tiny little pixel. Super crunched. You just unlocked like a core memory. Yeah. I remember doing that. Was that on Game Boy Advance or was that? Yeah, um, I, I had okay. Pac-Man Museum as a kid, which was uh, yep. Pac-Man, Pac-Attack and Pac-Mania. I had that one and I think Namco Museum on Game Boy Advance, which had the same oh, uh, features. Yeah, Namco Museum was one that like I, I played that later down the line, and I'm like, man, this would have this would have this would have hit hard as a kid. Like it's just like you get Miss Pac-Man and Galaga and Dig Dug, all of that. Yeah. I only had Pac-Man Museum, and that was a that was still fine, but it was just it's still like, fun. Man, yeah. Namco Museum, you got that variety, which was really cool. But yeah, mm -hmm. I, I think if they would have done something like that, gave you like some different screen options, that would have been really cool. It would have saved the game, honestly. Like. This would, it could have been like an A-tier game if it had the option to just zoom the screen out. Yeah, I feel like it's B though. I think everything it is, like it's still very impressive. It's still a great version of Mario 1. If it's B, it should be low B. I think it's Mario 64 DS territory. I think it's a yes. very similar, similar type of experience to that where in many ways it's superior, but it has some fatal flaws that kind of make it mm -hmm. more controversial. Yeah, if the game was ported for, if it was somehow ported and they just made it widescreen, it'd be the best version of Mario Bros. 1, hands down. Yeah, for sure. I think, moving on, we have another port slash remake. It is Super mm -hmm. Mario Advance, a launch title for the Game Boy Advance, an interesting choice for a launch title. They just decided to remake Super Mario Bros. 2. Uh, yep. and it's pretty much just the Mario All-Stars version with a couple new enhancements. The voice acting. Yeah, the voice acting, large turnips and enemies. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. The large turnips were actually, um, really broken, because I think if you killed, like, two enemies at the same time, you would, you would get, like, a, a one-up or something. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know if I like this one more than the original, because I really like how the original controls but obviously the remake looks a lot better. Plus it's got Mario Bros on the arcade again, so. It does, well it was the one that introduced it. That's right, yep, the first Mario Advance. <laughs> Pretty much any Mario GBA game <laughs> like included it. I didn't grow up with this one. Uh, I've only played it a little bit in uh, in retrospect, and I think it's a cool version of Mario, uh, Mario Brothers 2, but I don't have a huge affinity for it, uh, mainly because I grew up with Mario Advance 2 and 3, uh, so okay, I didn't yeah. play this one much so i think this makes sense around b territory i would say b maybe a just because it has mario bros arcade in it. and it's still it's a good version of mario brothers too yeah it is a really it's very faithful i they will say talk the voices a lot. can get <laughs> the voices can get a little annoying i mean it really depends on 
your taste. Like, I personally like hearing Mario talk every five seconds. I think it's funny. But yeah, it, some it people character. might get annoyed. It does. Yeah. It adds character. He just I says, I think that's huh. nice. All yeah. the time. And I think it's fun. I remember the other ones. Birdo talks too. Birdo says, this is the part where you run away. I think yeah, that's what yeah. she said. <laughs> B or A. I mean, either or is good. I think we'll go, we'll go low A. I think that okay. sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah, we'll go low A. Now, Mario All-Stars, I think this probably belongs in S tier. Eh, maybe high A. Oh, man. I, I think for the value, it's S. Yeah. I I, I, I kind of have a problem because, like, thinking back, the version of Mario 1 and Mario All-Stars isn't very good. Really? You didn't like it? It has weird physics, man. It does, yes. You try, uh, you try breaking blocks in that game, it's weird. I don't mean it's not very good, it's more so, I wouldn't really prefer, I don't prefer playing Mario All-Stars Mario 1 to the original. I'm kind of indifferent on like which one's better. I just, I think the value of Mario All-Stars just makes it an S tier game. Plus I think yeah. you can save in that game too, which you is can. huge. Yeah. At least back then that was huge. I'd say, I'd say low S. I'd say low S. Yeah, probably S. like low S. Maybe yeah. high A as well. Uh, well, it depends if, if this version has Mario World in it, because one of the versions didn't. I'm not adding another game to this list. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't need to. Let's just assume it's the one with Mario World in it. In that case, yes. yeah, sure. Low S. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I think it belongs there, but it's an incredible... I, I, this set the standard for, like, remakes going forward. This is, like, one of the first mm -hmm. original big remakes there were them yeah. before, but like this was like this kind of set the standard for what remakes could be and what they should be. It's called All Stars. I mean, it really set a precedent for what you can do with a remake. Yeah, exactly. I think low S. Now the original New Super Mario Brothers. Um, now it may not be the one that I play the most today. Like it may not be the one that I revisit the most, but I think it's probably like the best new super mario brothers game yeah i would actually put this in like low a because first off it has mini games it brings back like all the good ones from mario 64 ds and it adds brand new ones which were all really fun but it's got the koopa shell mechanic the koopa shell power up where you can run around levels well not run around you slide around levels in a koopa shell and it's so much fun trying to just play an entire level as a koopa shell there's just something about that that is just inherently super fun and it's only in this in this one new super mario bros game also only only new super mario bros game to have original bosses it has mummy pokey that is true Cheap skipper it has a big goomba it's got lackey thunder they do a lot of really cool things with the terrain uh just in this yeah, game that's like it morphs and moves around like in no other mario game this truly feels mm -hmm. like like they evolved the 2D Mario formula, which they did. They introduced yeah. uh, elements from 3D Mario's moveset in this game. Uh, and they didn't really do much more after this. It pretty much set the set the groundwork. They set the standard. Yeah, for what yeah. 2D Mario is now. Uh, and they also included it so much more than any other 2D Mario game. Or any other new Super Mario Brothers, Mario Brothers game. Or 2D Mario game for that matter. You have the multiplayer mm -hmm. mode in this game. Yeah, that's right. Which yep. New Super Mario Brothers Wii may have introduced like four player simultaneous like co op throughout the entire campaign, but New Super Mario Brothers still had like multiplayer where you could play with Luigi in the levels just running around. This game was huge back then. This is another one oh, of those yeah. magical games where everyone was playing it. I mean, I, I probably shared this story before on on my channel, but um, yeah, there was there was a day I was at the airport, I was playing New Super Mario Bros. DS, and this random dude just came up to me. He's like, "Hey, do you want to play the multiplayer?" Because he saw that I was playing it. <laughs> And we played it for like 45 minutes. It was awesome. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was really fun. Yeah, like that's just, it's just something magical about uh, that DS era where like, I just feel like people don't do that anymore. People are a little too like, it's just like, I'm not going to bother people. Yeah. But uh, it, it, it was something about the DS era where like you just picked out chat people. Oh yeah, of course. I don't know. It, yeah. th this game was just a full package. It had so much. If you had this in Mario 64 DS, I mean, not only were those pretty much the only mainline Mario games on the DS, but you were set mainline Mario-wise. You got a pretty yeah, solid 3D a Mario experience. You got a great 2D Mario experience. It was great. And mm -hmm. I think this is uh, probably the most ambitious 
new Super Mario Brothers game, which is weird because it's the first one. <laughs> yeah, because the other ones didn't really do much outside of like adding multiplayer. Like they didn't bring back mini games, they didn't bring back the multiplayer modes, they didn't introduce new course themes outside of like two levels in Mario Bros. U, where they had the 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 Van Gogh painting type levels, but that's really about it. They did a lot with this game, and I think it definitely belongs in a. I think it definitely belongs in A. It's it's yeah. up there. It's up there. I think so too. Next up, we have Super Mario 3D Land. This one is interesting. I'm interested to hear where you think this one lies. I really like this game. I, I have a lot of memories with this game, and I, I replayed it a couple years ago, and I still really liked it. But it, it is a very simple 3D Mario experience. I don't hate the game, but I've always found it to be kind of bland. Like, I feel like it doesn't have much of an identity of itself because I'm, you know, its main gimmick is like the Tanuki Leaf, right? Which it's the first time we've had the Tanuki Leaf in 3D, but one, it doesn't function the same, and two, it's not a, a brand new, you know, item. And I, I think the idea of having multiple small levels is really cool with, with you know, because that's what 3D Land, 3D Land was the first game to do that. But the fact that the levels aren't even organized by theme is just kind of like throw whatever in whatever place. It makes it really hard to remember anything about the game. It controls fine. I like the controls. The 3D sections are kind of cool. Um, and it's still fun. I liked it. I don't know. For me, it's like a B tier, maybe low A. I think a high B makes a lot of sense for it. I think a high B is fine. I really loved this game back in the day. I mean, like, talk, you know, talking about nostalgia and also feeling like, man, I'm just this... <laughs> I'm a young creep, just, just, oh man, I'm nostalgic over 2011. A lot of people are going to be like, well, wow, how could you be nostalgic over something that was, uh, you know, over a decade ago? I think it's a structurally really good game. The problem is it just doesn't really do much outside of be a great original 3D Mario game for a handheld. Yeah, I guess like for me, it felt like a step down because we had just gotten Galaxy 2 and then next was 3D Land where it takes away so much of the cool stuff, which, you know, it's on a handheld. Yeah, and it's also its own thing. It did its own thing yeah. of like, hey, this is like a 2D Mario mixed with a 3D Mario. It controls better than 64 DS. I'll give oh, it, it controls great for what it is. I, I think for what it is in a vacuum, it's a great just like, Hey, I'm just gonna, you know, like, I love playing this game, just plowing through it, like, mm -hmm. getting all the star medals, or, uh, the, the, are they star yeah, medals were, in this game? They, they change star, star coins, star medals, one. comet medals, <laughs> like, they just, they, they change, like, the word, they change one of the words each time, but, um, mm -hmm. yeah, they, they, uh, it's just fun to 100% it, pretty much just plow right through it in a couple hours, um, yeah. I love the post game in it. I think it's great. I think it's pretty much like it pretty much opens it entirely like it doubles in length. Um, I think that was really fun at the time. Of course, back in the day when I when that happened, I didn't really view it as like, oh, wow, these are remixes of previous stages. I thought they were just brand new stages. So did I. Yeah. yeah until, you, until you replay it and you're like, oh, half of these are just the old stages, but slightly harder. <laughs> yeah. But I think like a high B makes a lot of sense for it. I have a lot yeah. of nostalgia and yeah. uh, an appreciation for 3D Land, but overall, I do think it um, it doesn't really do much right now. Where it's like, oh, here's why you need to play 3D Land specifically. Unlike like New Super Mario Brothers One, which I think has a lot to offer even uh, even mm -hmm. nowadays. And it did a lot for 3D, but like the the 3D effect of the 3DS, but you can play with it off, you know, like it's, it's not yeah. necessary. It's something where it's kind of, it's more necessary than other 3DS games, but it's not necessary. You really don't need to outside of, I guess, to make some of the star medals easier to collect, like in those special 3D rooms. But even then, you know, you can figure it out if you just kind of jump around. Which, uh, hey, I mean, for that, I, I, I think that was this game's main gimmick was the fact that like, mm -hmm. hey, we're making 3D seem necessary. And it was kind of the yeah. only 3DS game to do it, <laughs> so. Eh. Mm -hmm. But next up, we have the other Mario game on 3DS, New Super Mario Brothers 2. This is, I mean, for me, this is another B tier game where it's better than Wii and Mario Bros. U, and it's kind of dumb because it's literally, it's just fun to collect a bajillion coins. Gold Mario is such a dumb power up, but again, it is really cool to watch blocks evaporate in front of you. And uh, it's got DLC, the only 2D Mario game to have DLC levels. 
And the DLC was really good, um, especially if you wanted more of a challenge. But the, the Impossible Pack has probably still the hardest three sets of levels that have come out of 2D Mario, outside of like Mario Maker. I think this game is a great guilty pleasure. It's something where I know it is so cookie cutter. It is so just like, hey, oh, yeah. we're just taking pretty much elements from New Super Mario Brothers Wii and putting it in this game. And that's pretty much and making a new game out of it. But when you replay it, like they do have some like different backgrounds. They do have like some different things mm -hmm. here and there. But when you're when you're splitting hairs like that, it, it's getting a little ridiculous. Um, this game introduces so little new. Literally no new enemies. Yeah. It brings back the Tanuki Leaf. Yeah, and, and it was interesting because uh, the Tanuki Leaf in Mario 3D Land was a little disappointing because it kind of just felt like like you brought it back but you didn't because you can't fly with it which makes sense because in 3d you would com yeah. completely destroy the levels with it it wouldn't make sense in that game but at that point i think it would have made sense for them to introduce a new power up in yeah. mario 3d land that you could glide or you could float with uh or hover with whatever um and use an attack but it's different uh instead of using the tanuki design for nostalgia but uh, Raccoon Mario in New Super Mario Bros. 2 is, uh, you know, is like Raccoon Mario in Mario 3, which is really, normally. really cool. Yeah, it's just not really like, I don't really think it's like properly like, they don't they don't use it that much. It, it's kind of just there. It's kind of, it's easy to forget that it's in the game. Yeah, I, I just think of Gold Mario, which I mean, makes sense because yeah. the whole point is just to collect coins. Even like, and when it, in terms of like enemies, it, to give, you know, the New Super Mario Bros. series credit, all the games, for the most part, introduce new enemies, except for the second game. That game has gold boos, gold goombas, and like dry, like dry fish. That's it. There is no actually new enemies. Like you know, there was Bruiser in Mario Bros. DS as just like one example. But yeah, it really just goes to show, like like you said, how cookie cutter this is. Basically, the gimmick is collect stuff, collect coins. That's it. But for what it is. I it is there really is something fun. that is fun about it though yeah yeah it's really fun it's something where like the way the levels are designed and the way it's just they're shorter they're it's kind of like a new super mario uh, new super luigi u where it's just like the levels are shorter than the home console ones but yeah. it has the the kind of the quality that those home console games introduced where it's kind of like new super mario brothers wii mixed with the original new super mario brothers and uh i think you get a lot of like good out of that I think it feels really good. I love how it feels. Um, it's just a good game to just plow through, similar to 3D Land. And I think Coin Rush is amazing in this game. Well, not amazing, but it's a great new mode. I think it's a mm -hmm. fantastic mode that should be in more uh, 2D Mario games or Mario games in general. Yeah, um, the DLC is fantastic. Uh, or maybe also not fantastic, but it, it, it's fun. <laughs> it's, 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 it's good. It's really yeah. not even that expensive. It's like two, three dollars for like three levels. So it's not that much. If you, if you buy all of it, it's like less than thirty dollars. And you get a lot of levels with that. So in in that game has co-op, which you can play the entire game co-op. And I I think a lot of people forget that. And um, I have tinkered with it a little bit. I haven't actually played the game with like another person. I've just, you know, I've done stuff in the past where I'm using two at the same time on my own. But mm -hmm. not really any lag. It works pretty well play the whole game that way i think that's definitely you know uh a good future too yeah i think overall this game is it's kind of a junk food game but i would rather play it compared to mario wii luigi u new super mario brothers u uh right now uh you know it's one that just feels the easiest to just pop open play a little bit uh the coin mechanic is useless but it is still addicting uh, I, I remember yeah. just really, like, I even knew back in the day, like, it's just like, I know if I get a million coins, nothing's going to happen, but mm -hmm. I still went for it anyways. And it is obtainable, uh, especially if you do coin rush. Uh, but it is, it is satisfying. It's one of those things where it, it feels, it's satisfying, even though it shouldn't be. I like B. Yeah, I think B's fine for it. Now, the original New Super Mario Brothers U, since we've already kind of talked about New Super Mario Brothers U enough, I think... I think B still makes sense, though. Like, I put it kind of, like, lower B. Yeah, either lower B or, like, on the same level as the deluxe one, because really the only difference worth mentioning is just the gamepad. There's the mode, the exclusive mode in that game. Plus, in the main game, you can have someone, like, tap the screen and make blocks. 
that's really about it. There's not much else. Pretty useless. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's one of their worst ideas in terms of uh, making it the Wii dumb. U w w worthwhile. Although I will say, um, a few years ago, uh, you know, I was I was playing the game with my friend Nico BBQ, and we played New Super Mario Bros. U, where I would touch the blocks, and he had to stay on the blocks without touching the ground. So that made the game oh, fun. Yeah. <laughs> but otherwise, why would you do it? Like, it's, it's completely useless. Me and my friends did a thing where we just tried to be the biggest, like dick too <laughs> like it's just oh, like you, you like just lock like, them off you just i mean like it's not even you don't even try to like uh we weren't even trying to be like uh strategic about it you just keep on jamming on the on the wii gamepad <laughs> yeah. and it makes it impossible to play like it, it's just like there's no limit to the amount of blocks on screen half the time like mm -hmm. they just keep on popping up so i i personally find the game to be more <sighs> it, New Super Mario Brothers U Deluxe confuses me, even though it is a more accessible version for the most part. Right now, anyway. New Super Mario Brothers U, I think, is a little more like, it just, things make sense to me personally. Like, it's just like, mm. oh, all the modes add up and everything, everything just kind of makes, makes sense. You know, at the time when it came out, made sense as a $60 release. Um, all of that, and, uh, and, and plus, like, y there was, like, some bundles that released with Mario U and Luigi U included. Yeah, um, yeah I would say, mm, I mean, we're, I I'll, I'll leave it up to you. Where do you think the original Mario U belongs on this list? I would put it with C because they're basically the same games, if I had to pick. I'll put it high C, uh, at least above Mario Run. Yeah, sure. Because, yeah. Now, uh, next up is Mario 3D All-Stars. A bit of an interesting one. You see, yeah. I I included this because we are, we're including Mario All-Stars, so... It's so weird, because, like, this is not the same case at all. But it also no. kind of is. I put it in A. Yeah, we'll put it in A. I know at the time, and the thing is, at the time, this game was super controversial because Nintendo really did not do anything to spruce up these three games. They did not up to the textures or really remake the games. All they did was they made everything HD, they gave Sunshine widescreen, uh, Mario Galaxy has the, the pointer controls. That's about it. They didn't even give Mario 64 widescreen or uh, an FPS boost, you know. They didn't even do the bare minimum. Yeah, I'd say they did enough to warrant the value. Yeah, it's still definitely A tier for sure, but. Yeah, cause it's just like when you add up how much all those those three games cost separately on like let's say the Wii U Wii Shop, like uh, Mario sixty four was fifteen, Mario Galaxy was twenty, and we can or no 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 Mario Mario sixty four was ten. Yeah, it was yeah it was ten. You can't even get Mario Sunshine on Wii U. Let's assume Sunshine would be fifteen. Yeah, fifteen twenty bucks, you know something like that. It would add up to about forty five fifty bucks. Um, yeah. Add the extras that they included, the fact that, like, yeah, Sunshine is now in widescreen. Galaxy is, you can use whatever, no motion controls now, and all of this. I think it roughly meets the bare minimum for the price. It's extremely lazy, but it works. Like, yeah. And I know another thing that, just to very quickly bring up, is, yes... You can emulate these games at higher resolutions and stuff, but like... But that's annoying. <laughs> yeah, that, that is a pain in the butt. Not everyone... There's, it's a vocal minority that wants to do those things first. And second, we're, this is, we're talking about official Nintendo games, not like things that you can emulate or mod to be better. And as someone that mods stuff all the time, like, I'm not comparing it to something like that. It needs to be compared with what's officially out there by Nintendo. And for that reason, A tier. As somebody who doesn't mod stuff all the time, it is... It is my worst nightmare. I, yeah. I hate doing it. It is annoying. And I prefer just, not because I'm like standing on my little high horse and being like, oh, I prefer to play the official versions. Obviously I prefer to play the official versions, but if there's a better means of playing something and there's no official means of playing it, I'll emulate it. Even if there's an official way of playing it, I'm fine with emulating stuff. It's just a pain in the ass a lot of the time. Yeah, I mean, you need like a good computer. Plus, you know, when you're playing, when you're emulating stuff, you're probably hunched over on, on in a chair on your PC. It's not as comfortable as sitting on the couch, you know. I mean, when I when I got 3D All-Stars, I played Sunshine 
I, I think I played through all of Sunshine, and I did that even the playing, I played it a bunch of times because I could just play it on the couch. It was nice. Didn't have to sit up like this all day. Yeah, there's a reason why, like, uh, a lot of people, they'll pirate, like, millions of movies, and they'll have, like, a little server, and they'll have it yeah. hooked up to, like, whatever, their TV, and they get all the movies they want in the world. I would still much rather just subscribe to Netflix. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's just simpler because you still have to download them all and organize them. And it's a whole thing that a lot of people don't want to put up with. Yeah, I don't want to put up with, I don't want to put up with, it, when I emulate something goes wrong or something doesn't work properly and I have to tinker with it. Figure out what's uh, wrong Or I have it. to figure out, yeah, so. No, that's totally understandable. That's just how I feel about that kind of debate where I see the value in it, but like obviously it is much easier and I would rather pay the $60 to get Nintendo's official version, even if it yeah. is lacking. Um, but at the end of the day, these are still three of the greatest 3D platformers of all time uh, available portably in in their original capacity for the first time ever. Um, it's like, yeah, Mario 64 DS, but eh, <laughs> you get the original version now. Exactly. And uh, yeah. yeah. I think there's still a lot of value to this package. Um, they could have gone a lot further. They could have included 3D Land, Galaxy 2, 64 DS. They could have uh, they could have included more options. They could have included bonus features. They could have included scrap stuff. They could have included all kinds of things. There are so many amazing compilations and remakes and ports out there that includes like all this cool stuff. I mean, just look at Kirby's Dream Collection. Did you play Kirby's Dream Collection? That oh, was yeah. incredible. incredible. I finally played it last year. Oh my god, it's so good. They have so much stuff. They even have like, the little timeline thing where you just yeah. move around with Kirby. It's superfluous, but it's still really cool. If they included something like that, it wouldn't have been that crazy to include. It would have been but awesome. Just a, like, just a Mario museum. Just and a they little didn't even Mario include, timeline. It's not even all the 3D games. Like They don't even have Galaxy 2 in it. Like, why not it, at least put in Galaxy 2? Like, I understand if they don't want to port Mario 64 DS and 3D Land, that's fine. But, like, not even Galaxy 2. I don't understand that. It, probably just a lack of time. They didn't have time to do it, but still. Well, I mean, including the soundtracks is, like, bare minimum. And even then, is that really a feature? It's like, okay, <laughs> cool. Either way, it's still a good collection of yes. the games. And it's a good collection of amazing games. So, I think A... I'm yeah. cool with that. Now, uh, Mario Brothers The Lost Levels. This is probably my least favorite Mario game. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, this is one of the ones I was thinking would be in the lower lower end. It's awful. I, I have nothing good to say about it, personally. I was going to say it's fine overall, but, like... Ah, I like, hate it. I think it's just... It's just... Absolute garbage. Like, you know, back then when it came to sequels for games, you don't necessarily expect them to really revamp things. But, like, they didn't even attempt that at all. Like, there's very, very little that's new in terms of assets. Yeah, there's the poison mushroom. Oh, cool. It kills me. Great. Thank you for making that. Um, the level design is horrible, especially when you get later into that game. Like, when you get to, like, worlds A through D, you're basically just playing Mario Maker troll levels. Like, it's so bad. I, I hate that game. I think it's the worst thing ever. I think they definitely made the right call doing what they did with Mario 2 USA. Oh, absolutely. That If they released that game as the official Mario Bros. 2, that could have killed Mario on the spot. Yeah. Honestly. Well, Mario, Mario 2 USA obviously introduced far more to the Mario franchise than Mario, the original Mario 2 ever did. Yeah. Yeah, that too. Like, you got so much stuff. You got so many attributes of the extended Mario cast with Luigi, Peach, and Toad. Like, mm -hmm. that kind of solidified a lot of their character in Mario 2. And you get, you know, like, you, you have new enemies and just things that would appear in the Mario franchise from that point forward. Uh, Mario 2 The Lost Levels doesn't have anything that really matters other than the poison mushroom. And Luigi. You can play as Luigi. And his jump is different. Like, it jumps higher, but... Yeah, so, like, sure. But it's like, yeah, I never really care to play this one. The, the unlock mechanic, like, if you want to play Worlds A through D, you have to play Worlds 1 through 8, 8 times, without using skips, and without dying. Imagine actually going through with that. And, the game, and like, this game's already difficult as it is. Like, imagine actually doing that. Yeah, it's Be just nuts. something where the only time I ever really play it, it's just kind of for novelty purposes. Yeah. Just to be like, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This, game this is the one that. Ooh. This was the one that got away. The one that they didn't want us to ever play. And like, yeah, like I, I might play the first couple levels and 
that's it. Now, I will say the Mario All-Stars version is kind of enjoyable because it has, you know, a better save feature. Well, yeah, because you can actually save the game and it doesn't feel as difficult. But the original is... The physics are just so bad. It was one of the coolest games to get on, like, the Wii Virtual Console. Like, like I remember, yeah. like, when they offered that on the Wii Shop channel, it's just like, oh, I get the original version. That's cool. I think that's when most of us probably played it for the first time because people weren't yeah. really importing Japanese games back in, like, 2006 or 2007. And it wasn't worth it. It was $6, no. too. It was a dollar more. 600 <laughs> Wii channel points. Could have used that on anything better. Import tax? What are you importing? <laughs> <laughs> a digital file oh well, either way moving on we have uh another game uh roughly from this 8-bit era of mario kind of we have Somewhat. super mario brothers 35 uh not playable nowadays but i've I, I i made sure to uh get a couple first places before it went down mm -hmm. uh the night it went down uh so i have Decent amount, decent amount of footage of this game, thankfully. I wish I had some. I played it a lot, but I never recorded it. If you ever need any, let me know. Oh, I got, I, I got enough. Someday, I'm sure. I forced myself because, like, I got first place like pretty early on, like in the life of the game, and then the night, but I didn't record it. But the night uh, it went down, I was just like, I got, I got to do it. I got to do it because I'm yeah. never gonna be able to do this ever again. You're right. Uh, so Good like, I have did. footage of a first place. I have a footage of a first place finish. Thank God. Mm -hmm. um, but this game was was quite lovely. It was I really fun. liked this game. Yeah, I honestly, I really liked it. The only thing is, I remember people complained about it. I think it like dragged on near the end, like yeah. the last few places. Um, but I, I still thought it was pretty fun. Like this is like B tier ish. I just wish it went further. You know, that's yeah. my main problem with it. Like you could have done so much cool stuff. Even like the uh, the title screen or the uh, the menu screen music. Sounds like a remix of the Mario Maker theme, and that just kind of makes you think. And even it, it even it has that yellow aesthetic. It's just like, why not have like like the whatever the themes of Mario Maker? Like you can do Mario uh, Mario Three Thirty Five, Mario World Thirty Five, yeah. uh, New Super yeah. Mario Brothers U Thirty Five, or something. Uh, and uh, just the way the game was set up, you were playing those first couple levels of Mario over All and over and over again. Yeah. And I just wish it was a little. It just got more variety. You, you had to kind of unlock those extra levels, and it just, it got kind of old pretty quickly. And I just wish, like, they just, they, they offered it for longer, slash, you know, indefinitely. I wish they, yeah, why would they get rid of it? That's just such a Nintendo thing to do. Very strange, because it's obvious this game had a lot of work put into it. Yeah. Um, doesn't really seem like, obviously, I mean, like, you're just reusing assets from the original Super Mario Brothers, but still, like... It seems like something that would at least take a decent amount of development time. It must have taken probably like a year. I mean, I don't yeah. know exactly how long it, it would take, but I imagine it would take quite a long time. I mean, yeah, you're using the original assets, but like you're using them in completely different ways. Like the entire thing is online. The way that ca or enemies are transferred to other screens. It's totally completely different. Completely different game. Yeah. But yeah, I would say, I would say in the B. I would say in the Bs. I would say, uh, hmm... High B, mid B, low B. I would say in the middle. Yeah, I put this. I put this below Mario Brothers Wii and above Luigi U. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, that's a good spot. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, yeah. Next up is Super Mario Advance 4, Super Mario Brothers 3. This may be the highest rated of the Mario Advance series, in my opinion. Yeah, and I think especially the Wii U version because it comes with all of the e-reader levels. Big deal. Yeah, that that's actually a huge thing. Like, it's like 40 extra levels. You do have screen crunch, but like maybe low S. I would honestly put it like low S or high A. Like, this game is awesome. I think low S, just because that's more interesting. Yeah. Yeah, you have, like, um, on the Wii U version, all the e-reader levels are unlocked, and that just that just opens up an entirely new 2D Mario game, pretty much. Yeah, exactly. And on top of that, it's Mario 3, one of the best 2D Marios. Mm -hmm. uh, and in a really great state, you know, just using the Mario All-Stars visuals, so it looks a lot nicer. You have the Mario Brothers Arcade game once again. I was going to bring that up. It has Mario Bros. Arcade. I think this was, like, this was the best Mario Advance game. This was the one that I always wanted but never had back in the day. Yeah, I never had this one. I only had Advance 1 and 3. 
That was it. This is probably the best one, in my opinion. Yeah, definitely. And uh, I'll just put it below Mario All-Stars for now, just because uh, it's still, it's derivative of Mario All-Stars. It's the Mario All-Stars version of Mario 3, basically, but mm -hmm. <sighs> maybe above Mario All-Stars. I don't know. <sighs> we'll just leave it there for now. I would probably say All-Stars is still technically better just because it has more to do. Yeah. That's really the only reason why. Technically speaking, okay, you have Mario 3, you also have the original Mario Brothers, and you have like a basically new game in the form of the e-reader levels. So you yeah. kind of have three games in one. That's, you know, that's actually a good point. Maybe two and a half games, because let's, let's be real, Mario Bros. Arcade <laughs> is like, it's not really a full yeah. game. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, only, I, I, I like where it's at right now. I think it's fine. Yeah, that works. Next up is Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury. Though, maybe we should rank the original 3D World first. The original, I'd put an A tier, and then the Bowser's Fury version, I'd put an S tier. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. This game and I have had like a fluctuating relationship. When it was first revealed, it was very underwhelming. Well, the first trailer was awful. Uh, yeah, that. horrible. Like, I don't know I don't know what the hell they were thinking. Uh, and then it came out, and I feel like everybody ha was on a bit of a high at that point because, like, the Xbox One and PS4 were launching, and everybody kind of wanted the Wii U to have, like, a 3DS comeback. I think everybody wanted to uh, push 3D World as, like, this incredible, incredible game where it's a fantastic one, but it was still, like, it, it's just, like, it, it was... It was a little underwhelming in some regards because it wasn't that true, like, 3D, like, sandboxy, galaxy style, whatever, one of those style of 3D yeah. Marios. And that's why I kind of got a little low on it after that high when it came out. But then when we got Odyssey, and especially with the Switch release, it's kind of gone back up and it's really easy to appreciate how fantastic of a game it is yeah i remember you know when the game came out um i thought 3d world was like my favorite mario game um and it's it's still like in my top 10 i would say even when it came out but yeah like it is weird because it, it originally it kind of felt like mario 3d land but what it should have been um and then you know everyone still wanted that open world mario game and then once we got it you know i think more people appreciate it but i i've always liked 3d world just the fact that the levels are way way better the music is much more interesting than 3D Land. The cat suit is incredible. Um, the champ, the, the 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 very ending with Champions Road is a oh. lot of fun. Um, <laughs> yeah. There's just there's so much to like about 3D World, uh, especially the Switch version because they make the, every character run faster, which is it's just so much more enjoyable. You can skip cutscenes in the uh, the Switch version. Of course, it has Bowser's Fury, which I'm assuming is is the blueprint for whatever the next Mario game is going to be. Um, and Bowser's Fury is so much fun. I mean, I sped run that game for a couple months. Um, I just love the way that it kind of combines everything from all the 3D Mario games and puts it all into one. I think it's just awesome. I think the Switch version belongs in S, S tier. It is genuinely, yeah. I think this is like one of the best purchases you can make on Switch. It's personally. better than Mario Bros. U Deluxe. Why is everyone buying that? Buy 3D World yeah. and Bowser's Fury. It's so much better. You get a fantastic game with 3D World. And on top of that, you get a really great experience with Bowser's Fury. Something mm -hmm. new, something unique, something while it is short. Like, it's really fun to replay. And it's really it's cool so to just... Fun. It's really cool that first time you play. And then it's really fun to replay on top of that. Um, mm -hmm. And you get both. And the 3D World port that they did on Switch. I mean, like... I keep forgetting they added online multiplayer. It may not That's be perfect, right. but the fact they yeah. added online multiplayer. Honestly, I thought, so I've played the online a couple times and I didn't really have lag issues. Now I know some people have with that game, but I didn't. I haven't played enough of the online. Maybe we should try that out sometime. Yeah. Um, I'd be, I'd be down to. That'd be cool. I think, uh, but, but they, they, they effectively fixed a lot of like little minor things with 3D World in the Switch version. Just the fact mm -hmm. that they colorized the stamps. There's the photo mode. And, and and the fact that like back on the Wii U, only the person with the gamepad uh, could use like the touch screen to like change things or like a f or like hold enemies in place and whatnot. Now everybody can with the gyro pointer and all of that, yep. which is just a really cool addition. And it, it's something where they truly thought of everything. The fact that it runs faster now, uh, even the UI has been slightly changed to just be less intrusive. You know, it's interesting how like Nintendo chose to increase the running speed. Like that's such a weird thing for them to do for like a port. 
but it makes it so much better. It makes even it on a replay. Way better. You know? Yeah, like I've actually been so I'm I've been so star for new Mario that I've actually been replaying Mario 3D World currently, just you yeah. know going for a hundred percent completion, beating the levels with all the characters. And it really makes, just the fact that the characters run faster makes it so much more enjoyable because you get through them faster. Um, I don't know, there's just something about it that just makes it so much more fun. And it's something where it kind of makes it just like a new feeling experience for people who played it on Wii U. Mm -hmm. Where it's just like, yeah, I played this game so much on Wii U, but playing it on Switch, it, it felt new, it felt different. And I just think that's really, really cool. And the fact that it just kind of makes the Wii U version pretty irrelevant now. Yeah, there's not much reason to play it. I mean, I will say the touchscreen mechanics are a little bit better on Wii U, just because with the Switch, um, your uh, your pointer can get really wonky. Like, there's a lot of times, if you're holding the controller, like, you know, sideways, it'll show up in the middle, and then you have to aim like this instead of straight ahead. But it's really very minor. It's not even that big a deal. Overall, uh, I think 3D World on the Wii U, uh, looking back and, and playing it in retrospect, it's a fantastic game. One of the best Mario games, though yeah. I wouldn't call it like S tier. It's really good for what it is. But I think it was always meant to be a bit of a lower key 3D Mario. Um, whereas the Switch version takes it and just kind of turns it into like one of the best Mario games of all time, taking that and Bowser's Fury. Putting them together. I think it's one of the best Mario games. Yeah, personally, I mean, that Switch version. we could talk about Bowser's Fury for like, I feel like forever, but I won't do yeah. that because I know we've been going a while, but yeah, there's Bowser's Fury really, if the next Mario game is like that game in any way, where it takes the same concept of how the game works, oh my God, I can't wait. It's going to be so much fun. It's going to be really, really cool. Uh, mm -hmm. Next up, I think this is another easy S choice. It is Mario Galaxy. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah, I don't really know how much else to really talk about with that one. I mean, we already talked about Mario Galaxy 2, and it's obvious that Galaxy and Galaxy 2 kind of, I feel like, sit together, whether yeah. uh, one is better than the other. I, I feel like it's almost kind of like, kind of depends on what day you wake up sometimes. Yeah, that's kind of how I feel about it. Yeah. Or like, I've, I've I love Galaxy 1 through and through, but... Uh, Sometimes Galaxy 2 just does some things where I'm just like, yeah, sometimes I may prefer Galaxy 1 did this thing, but mm -hmm. Galaxy 2 is pretty damn good. It's kind of hard to argue. Galaxy 1 has more personality, I think, as well. Like, yeah. two really streamlined things where, one, it you know, it's got the Comet Observatory. You got to run around and to get to your levels and stuff, and it's got Rosalina's storybook, which is actually a very, very charming story. Um, very beautifully illustrated, too. Oh, wow. man. I just I just really thought about this uh, since the Wii era was big with Club Nintendo. Imagine if they offered Rosalina Storybook as like a Club Nintendo reward. That would have been pretty oh cool. Oh my god, that would have been pretty sick. That would have been yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, but yeah, Galaxy One is my favorite game of all time. I feel like it's something that feels like this is what Mario has led up to at this point. Like it feels so epic. It feels like everything that Mario was and is and will be in the future just combined into one uh the music is some of the best video game music that's ever been created Insane. i will yeah. say i think you know the music's incredible in both games but there's something about the first game where some of those songs really make you feel about things like just space junk galaxy as an example the final fight with bowser my god they they did an incredible job with with the music in the first game and uh, visuals still looks incredible. Yeah, it looks Still great. looks fantastic. Play, played on 3D All-Stars, it looks like a Switch game. Even if you play the Wii one, it's going to be yeah. a little blurry, a little pixelated, but it still, still looks, looks fantastic. really good. Yeah. Still looks really good. I could go on about this game forever, but S tier makes the most sense in the world for Galaxy 1. Absolutely. The original Super Mario Maker. This one's a little tricky. So yeah. uh, comparing this in Mario Maker 2... Mario Maker 2 is no doubt the better game, but I feel like Mario Maker 1 was the better experience. I think it depends on if you are a creator or if you are a player, because I would say if you're a creator, Mario Maker is the better game because the gamepad was literally made for this So game. much better. So much a better. Even playing better. in handheld mode, even creating in handheld mode on the Switch, weirdly feels cramped in Mario Maker 2. Like, it yeah. just doesn't feel very good. And then you also have the mystery mushroom costumes, like game changer. Yeah, I freaking love that. I mean, on it, I I blame this game 
for getting me addicted to buying Amiibo when I was in college. Yeah. <laughs> because I just wanted to get all the costumes. But I feel like Mario Maker 2 introduces so much where it's just like, that. that's why I say like, I feel like it's the better game. The Mario Maker 1 felt a lot more like a much better made and just much more organic experience. And that's yeah. why I kind of look back at it and I do kind of prefer it. Because me and my friends... Uh, we're playing like Mario Maker 1. We recorded a video where we just did a little Mario Maker challenge where it's just like, oh, let's try to make a stage and then play it and see if you can beat it, whatever. That is so easy to do in Mario Maker 1. That is yeah. miserable to do in Mario Maker 2. Absolutely yeah. miserable. I um In Mario Maker 2, I basically recreated all the levels in Super Mario Bros. 2, and it was the biggest pain in the butt just because the way that it controls, and I was, you know, doing it in handheld, it just does not, it just does doesn't not, feel good. It's just not good. And then Mario yeah. Bros. 1, it's so natural. You just drag stuff on, the menus aren't as confusing. I mean, you don't have as, as many options, of course, but like, that doesn't even matter when the user interface is so much better on the first game. Yeah, and it feels like Mario Maker 1, um, everything just kind of clicked a lot better together. Where Mario Maker 2, it just felt like they were just kind of like stacking stuff and just, just, throwing everything in there, but not really yeah. like making everything work well together. Where like, why is the 3D world theme like separated by itself? Yeah. And also the whole thing where it's just like, feels like they wanted to introduce more themes, but they never did. Yeah, that always perplexed me. Like they never did. I mean, they introduced the Mario Bros 2 mushroom, but why not like the entire thing? I always thought that was really weird. I assume while the game did very well, it didn't do well enough for them to warrant continue because it felt like, yeah. remember when they did that final update for Mario Maker 2? It just kind of felt like they threw just a bunch of stuff they were working on at you at once. Mm -hmm. It feels like that was kind of meant to be staggered, but they were just like, ah, let, we got to move on to the next thing we're working on. Yeah. Let's just put everything in, in this final update and let's just move on. I remember being so excited about Mario Maker 2 because I'm like, oh, this is going to be so good for, you know, Nintendo channels. But like, I don't know, people just didn't care that much about Mario Maker 2 for some reason. It was very weird. Mario Maker 1 was, like, big online. It was online. huge. It was huge. Yeah, and then Mario Maker 2, yeah. I felt like, I don't know. I think because the novelty was, like, gone. I think that's the main thing. And they also, they made it harder to create things. They yeah. didn't improve the the search functionality of levels, which yeah, I never understood. Problem. Because, like, I've said, I've, I've argued this before with, like, Game Builder Garage. But it's something where it's just like, okay, so I can't search for games via the game. Um, that doesn't, like, and, and, like, people will say, like, oh, well, it's for safety reasons. I'm like, that makes things less safe safety for kids. Reasons. You're going to have a kid go on Reddit <laughs> to find levels? Of course, yes. Like, come on, man. That makes no sense. That's way worse than just having a search bar in the game. Uh, I don't know. But I, I feel like, I feel like we're Mario Maker 1... Uh, is not as good. Mario Maker 2 succeeds, but where Mario Maker 2 isn't as good, Mario Maker 1 succeeds. So I kind of feel like they're interchangeable to me on, on the tier list. I feel like they yeah. kind of go next to each other, maybe like in high A. I would say they're both high A or low A, like next to each other. Because again, it depends on if you're a creator or a player. Yeah, I'd go I'd go mid A. I, I'd, go, I'd go like right in the okay. middle. Yeah, I think so. that's probably fine. I put them right next to each other, mainly because, like... They're very, very similar. They're very similar, and Mario Maker 2, while it is... It does add a lot, I feel like it does take away a lot of what made Mario Maker 1 special. Though Mario Maker 1 is definitely more limited. So, yeah, I feel like yeah, kind of give or take. Uh, Mario World Super Mario Advance 2. Um, so this was my childhood game, but it doesn't mm -hmm. add much to Mario World. It's pretty much just a way to play Mario World on the Game Boy Advance. I'd almost argue it's worse than the original just because the colors are so washed out. I would give, I would probably give Mario Advance 2 a high B. Yeah, I would say high B or A. And I also, um, I know not a lot of people again don't agree with me on this, but I feel, I don't really like the way Mario World controls personally. I think it's way too precise. Oh no. <laughs> I like the momentum mechanics of Mario Bros. 3 a lot uh -huh. more than Mario World. Like, Mario World's fine, but I definitely prefer having to build up my jump and then, you know, really feel the jump make an impact because of the momentum you created yourself. Where Mario World, you just kind of go and it and it 
It's just too precise. But we'll get to the debate when we get to that debate. We're yeah. coming up to it pretty quick. Because uh, I, I keep changing between Mario 3 and Mario World. It really depends on how I wake up that morning. Because uh, I grew up with both of them. Um, but, man... I would say Mario Advance 2, even though it is my childhood Game Boy Advance game. I'll let you pick this one, honestly, because I have not played nearly as much Mario World. I played a lot more of Mario 3. If I'm going to play Mario World, I'll, I'll just play regular Mario World, you know? Like, there's just not much reason to play this one outside of nostalgia. It's yeah. cool that they added, like, the opening cutscene. There's an opening cutscene, which I think, I think is kind of cool. Luigi, too, but... right? Luigi's in the Game well, Boy Advance yeah, one. Luigi has his little flutter kick uh, That's now. That's right. So they, 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 they updated him throughout the year. So it's just like the Mario All-Stars version of Mario World. He has that more refined whatever figure that looks more like Luigi. And then this one, he has his little flutter kick and, and he, he has different physics. So yeah. they do have some differences. But at the end of the day, I don't think there's much reason to play this compared to regular Mario World. So I'll give this a, a high B. Next up is uh, Mario Land 2, Six Golden Coins. This is like a B for me. Maybe A. I've seen people say this is like one of the best Mario games, and I'm like, yeah, for Game Boy. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's is. pretty much what I was going to say. It's very impressive for Game Boy, especially when you compare it to like Mario Land 1. It's such a drastic increase in quality in terms of like the music, how it controls. It has its own power-ups and stuff. The wor I really like the worlds. And I, lo I love Mario Land because you just walk into Mario's crotch and boom, you're in a level. <laughs> that, yeah, that's, exactly. that's hilarious. I love that, yeah. That's like a B tier, I would say. It still has kind of that funky Game Boy physics. Um, yeah. I think the creativity is really great. I think mm -hmm. the, the bunny ears are, are fine. Like, again, it feels like a lot of the, the love for this game does come from nostalgia and the fact that it's so impressive it's on a Game Boy. The fact that it uses kind of the, the Mario World-esque sprites. But overall, outside of the context of it being on Game Boy... I don't think it's like that amazing of a Mario game, but it is still one that I like to replay every now and then in the context of Game Boy play games, where it's just like, it's fun to play as those old Game Boy games because it's just like, they were so simple. It's one of the best Game Boy games. Like original yeah. Game Boy, it's one of the best that you can play. Overall, in the context of Mario as a whole, I don't think it's very impressive. As a Game yeah. Boy game, it is very impressive. I mean, you so. can, it's on Game Boy. Like, you can only do so much. Yeah, which is why it'll be interesting where we land with Mario Land. Uh, yeah. But uh, uh, next up is Super Mario Odyssey. Uh, so we've we've been uh, we've been sitting on this one for a couple years. Uh, back when yeah. it came out, this was labeled as you know, hey, this is the best Mario game of all time, or one of the best. This is an S tier. But uh, mm -hmm. it's been a couple years, so I'm I'm interested. You know, oh. where does it lie now? I think, I think still S. Okay, why do you think it's S? It's really good. <laughs> That's all I really got. <laughs> but to be fair, high A, I think makes sense because- I have reasons for A. I refuse to replay this game because, mainly because I'm, I just want a new one, but also because this game is not the best to replay. Yeah, that was, that was my point is, and I think a lot of people agree with me on this is, it's definitely not the best 3D Mario just because the replaying, the replay value is definitely an issue. Because for one of those people that wants to replay like the whole thing, it's really obnoxious because so many of the power moons repeat themselves over and over and over and over again and it just feels kind of tiring after a while. I mean, the game controls are, are perfect. Like it is the best feeling 3D Mario game of all time. The cap mechanics, obviously awesome. The locations, are, are really, really cool to look at. Although it is weird how there's like three or four of the kingdoms are so tiny, but you know, that's besides the point. I think just the fact that so many of the power moons didn't need to be in the game um, kind of dampens it a little bit. It's still a great game, but I don't know. It just felt kind of unnecessary, like looking back. And there's like a hundred Toadette stars. You just talk to Toadette and you get stars for that. Yeah, it does feel like something where uh, the controls are the best in any Mario game in my opinion. Yeah, it, it controls like a dream. Um, I think the gameplay setup, like the design of, of how they set up the game, I think is cool. I think it, it, it pushed Mario in a different direction compared to what 64 did, Sunshine did, Galaxy did. I really like that. It, it isn't something where I'm like, this is what I want Mario to be from here on out. Um, but more so, like, I like that it's a different type of 3D Mario, even though it's still sandboxy like Sunshine in 64. I like that they did something new, and I think it worked for the most part. 
Um, though it is something, like I said, I just don't really want to replay it. I, I want to. I, I'm like, man, I want to replay it, but I do kind of view replaying it as kind of a waste of time. Like, as in, like, I'm gonna, like, it's just, like, man. I don't have the same desire to, to replay that game compared to, like, Mario 64 or the Galaxy games. Like, I've made it a tradition for, like, the past 10 years to find an excuse to replay the Galaxy games. And with Odyssey, it's like, I do want to replay it, but I don't want to replay the whole thing. You know, I want to play the Bowser and, you know, play some of the Mushroom Kingdom stars, but I don't want to go out of my way and, and try to find all the, like... What does this random person want me to wear for a costume? Or buy a moon yeah. from all the shops? Or go to the binoculars and find the taxi? Like, those things just aren't as enjoyable. I'd say it's one of the best Mario experiences first time playing. Yes, it is the best first time. Yeah, I'll never forget Cascade Kingdom. Oh, oh yeah. my god. I had, like, I had the craziest goosebumps. I'm like, oh my god, open world Mario's back. I was so excited. Yeah. The music's all da da da. <laughs> it was perfect. It's a great, great game, and I really, I would love an Odyssey 2, or I would love to yeah. see what they do next, but um, I think high A, I, I would lean towards low S, personally. If it were just my list, I'd put it on A, but S is definitely acceptable, just because it is still a fantastic game, despite the fact that replaying it isn't great. I mean, would you say it's better than Mario Advance 4 or Super Mario Brothers 3? No. Probably not. Well, wow. actually, I don't know. You know what? It's kind of <laughs> yeah, <fun. laughs> I'm just kind of like, it's just like, it's one of those where you're playing Mario 3 and you're just like, damn, this ain't giving me Mario Odyssey vibes. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the just... thing is, I like re all these games on our S tier list. I will replay literally any time. I don't feel that, that is way true. with Odyssey. That is just, true. That's why I'd put it on A tier. Mm. All right. That makes sense to me. That makes sense all to right. me. I still think it's fantastic. I don't look at it like, man, if only the next Mario game is better than this. Like, it's just like, it isn't like that. It's more so like when I look at it critically, I'm like, yeah, that is fair. Now, next up is Mario 64. I think this belongs in S tier at the very lowest A tier. Uh, yeah, I feel like I can't talk about this game. Like, my bias is so strong on Mario 64. <laughs> I'll at least put it like... I'll at least put it in the middle. How about that? I'll at least put it in the middle. Yeah, so that's it's, fair. Because, like, it does have problems. Oh, absolutely. Like, it, it, yeah. it isn't... But that also makes it as good as it is. It's kind of like uh, Smash Melee in that regard. Mm -hmm. Or it's kind of like Mario Kart Wii, where it's just like, yeah, these games have problems, but that's what makes them so, so good. So special. Yeah. yeah, that's what makes them so good. We're like, I didn't like Mario Kart Wii for the longest time, or at least I was like, eh, that's one of my least favorite ones. But um, replaying it, I'm just like, that's what makes this special, because it's mm -hmm. so bullshit. And I think what's really unique about Mario Odyssey and Mario 64 is the, the way that you can combo together your moves to make it so much fun to control. Like, the only Mario game where you can long jump into a wall and then wall jump and dive immediately is Mario 64. Like, you know, the moveset's very easy to understand in Mario 64 in general, but you can, the, the way that you can like basically mix and mash the moves makes that game ridiculously fun to play. Now, obviously it looks pretty bad nowadays. There, there's camera control still. There are issues with it, but just the general feel of the game, like it's one of those games where you just have fun running around in Peach's Castle for like 30 minutes. I think it belongs in S for everything it did back when it came out and everything it's still doing these days. There's mm -hmm. a reason people still play it. There's a reason I, I was recently replaying it, you know? It's just like, it's so much fun still. It is one of the quintessential Mario games. There's no doubt about that. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Mario 2, um, I think A or B. I would say more A. Um, I would put it right next to Mario Advance. I don't really think uh, it's necessarily better or worse than the remake. I think it's kind of like a Mario Maker, Mario Maker 2 situation where like you can kind of interchange them, to be honest. You can kind of just pick whichever one you like. Yeah, I would put it like right next to Mario Advance because you can kind of like manipulate the controls a little bit more in the original game where you can like, you know, break it a little bit. A little bit more but uh i don't know i guess i'd put it like next to it i think that makes sense because i'm just kind of thinking i'm like yeah mario advance uh has some upgrades but it also like depends on who you're talking to might have some downgrades so like yeah I think exactly it's a little interchangeable uh next up is mario 3 
easy uh, S tier. I think that belongs in S, yeah. I think that belongs in S tier. Yeah. One of the best games of all time, not just best Mario games. I put it, I'll, I'll put it below uh, Mario Advance 4 for now, but uh, it's a little interchangeable because like, yeah. I'd still, I'll still replay the original NES one compared to the GBA one, but that's possibly because it's just more accessible, but it, still, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I like, I think the NES one, I prefer how that one controls compared to the Game Boy Advance one, but they're both very, yeah. very similar. There's not like a stark difference compared to like, let's say you're playing, I don't know, Mario Advance, or no, not Mario, Mario All-Stars, Mario Bros. 1 versus the original. Like those are very different. These two are pretty much the same thing. I'll actually put it above like Mario All-Stars because I'll at least keep in mind like what it was like at the time and also Mario All-Stars is still a remake at the end of the day. Yeah, um, that's true. So like, I'll, I'll, I'll just put it there. I also don't take the, the super like play, the, placement that seriously yeah i mean it's whatever the original mario brothers as in super mario brothers the original super mario brothers one this is like c tier whoa c tier eh? i would at yeah. least do b uh i mean w i think b would be fine for this game too i personally don't like replaying this one i just think it's wow it takes a while to really get used to the momentum again and i don't like that there's no continues I don't know. I mean, for me, it's a C, but I can understand it being in B, too. It's always a fun little blast through. You just blast through it. I mean, like, yeah. I'll, I'll, I, I will never be like, I've already played that. I'm good. Like, it'll always creep back in my life, you know? Yeah. Where it's just like, Super Mario Maker for 3DS, probably never going to play that again. <laughs> okay, I guess for the reason that, yes, I'm going to play Mario Bros. 1 again in my life, I guess I'd put it in B tier for that but not necessarily because I want to. <laughs> like, there's probably just, there's a specific reason. I think interchangeable with Deluxe. I still think Deluxe is better. I'll, I'll put it below Deluxe. Okay. It's, it's like a yeah. low B. Yeah, we'll go low B on that one. Now, Super Mario Land. <laughs> okay, what do you think about this one? Because I, I, I never know what someone's going to say when it comes to this game. I think it's a quirky little thing. Um, mm -hmm. I would, um, I'd probably put it low C. Really? Low C, okay. Yeah, I, I like it. As in, I have a, I have nostalgia for it. I played it a lot on like the 3DS Virtual Console. Uh, uh, okay. I, it, it reminds me a lot of summer. Like I, I played that at like a, at like one of my parents' friends' boathouse kind of thing while they were talking to them. Mm -hmm. I was just on their couch, and that's how I beat Mario Land. I just, I just sat there and I was like, I'm just gonna play through Mario Land and I'm just gonna beat it. Uh, and I think it is, it's an incredibly short game. It's a very easy game. Anybody can just blast through it and beat it. Um, it's not really challenging. The only challenging thing about it is the physics, which are abysmal. Some of the worst physics in any Mario game. However, at the end of the day, I think it's really charming with how, like, primitive it was. Um, and I think it's fun to blast through every now and then. Um, with that being said, it's obviously not a great game these days. Uh, that's why I think it goes in C. I would say, like, high C. Just because, and the reason I would say a little bit higher is just because the music is so oh, fantastic, so good in that game. I think it's better than Mario Land 2. I think that has good music too, but I think oh, it's yeah. more memorable in Mario Land 1. It's way more memorable. I mean, I'm just thinking about Mario Land right now, and I immediately have like all the songs stuck in my head at the same time. I mean, in Mario Land 2, I can't even think of what that music sounds like. I like. Bum, 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 da, da, bum. Da, da. And it has the can can for the stars, which is hilarious. Yeah, like every track in Mario Land is very memorable. Da, of course, da, da, that could be. Da, 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 that might da, 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 be because like it was a launch title for the Game Boy. It was there for the majority of the, if, if for, there for the entirety of its life. But it feels like the quintessential Game Boy game to me. Even though Mario Land Two is better, um, I just feel like Mario Land has a lot of charm to it, even though it's pretty crappy. <laughs> like, I don't know. Yeah, it, this is a weird one to place because, like, objectively, it's, it has not aged very well, but yeah. you know, you still love it. I mean, I also do like the space levels. I think those are kind of cool. Yeah, but, like, the bosses are, like, Oh my, I always forget how easy the bosses are. Like, you just jump over half of them. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so I'd say, like, see something. You know, somewhere in C yeah, tier. Yeah, I'm trying to think because I'm like, yeah, I would agree, like, high C overall. But, like, I do think these games are better. So like, You know what? Oh, you're right. I, okay, I would agree low C. Yeah. Yeah, low C, but that doesn't mean it's, like, I don't like it. It's more so like that's just that's just where it goes. It's 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 a, it's it's a pretty crappy little game nowadays, but it's charming. I like it. 
Mm -hmm. uh, Mario Sunshine. We're, we're in the thick of it right here. Mario Sunshine. This is A tier for me. This is an easy A tier. That makes sense. Yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely one of the lesser 3D Marios outside of like 3D Land. I think, I think it's probably the worst one. But that doesn't mean it's bad. Out of all the 3D Mario? Out of all the 3D Marios. I, really? Not considering oh. 3D Land. Oh, okay. Not considering 3D Land. So I say 3D Land is the worst, but... I yeah, I mean, it's interesting because... Like, something really... something has to be second worst. Like, that's just how... That's just why I'm saying that. Yeah. I mean, so, I mean, personally, like, I don't care about the blue coin thing. I honestly think it's... I think the blue coins are fun for post-game. Because it lets you really explore the levels. I know a lot of the blue coins are obnoxious to get, but I don't think it. In terms of like what to do for post game, I think it's fine. The controls are awesome. The flood pack is so much fun to use. The secret levels with the do 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 do. You know that music, incredible, iconic. Uh, no. There are some pretty you know horrible levels. There's the poison river. There's of course the infamous pachinko machine. Uh, there's the sandbird. You know levels no one really likes. I, I maybe like mid A tier, low A tier. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, I can't really think of any bad levels that are like, wow, that sucked in like 3D World, Odyssey, any of the other 3D Marios. That's uh, true. 3D Land is just more forgettable. Like, I there's probably a level that I'm like, I didn't like that, but I don't remember it. At least yeah. Sunshine's memorable. Uh, you know what? I think Sunshine should be low tier behind 3D All Stars because simply because it's not in widescreen. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I, I think... Um, it doesn't yeah. really offer anything better than 3D All-Stars does. Yeah, I think that is true. You know what? Uh, just because of that, I think I got I got to put... Uh, I could have put Mario 2 and Mario Advance below Sunshine. I don't know why. I just feel like Sunshine is I think, better no, that's than fair. that. Then. I think that's fair. I, I mean, Sunshine's also a lot longer, and there's a lot more to do compared to yeah. Mario Bros. 2. And the vibes of it are fantastic. It's it's a fantastic game, and it, with a great art style, great cohesive art style, and great direction. I actually really like that they only stuck with that one art style because it forced them to be really creative with the levels they made. That's how I feel about sticking to a theme. Like it's great yeah. to be a theme. Like like I look at a game like uh, Kirby Star Allies, and that doesn't really have much of a theme. And because that's, of that, like that's my issue with 3D Land is like there's no yeah. theme. Yeah, there's no theme, and it's just like oh, we can do whatever we want. But like doing that, you just stick to a basic template. Where like a game like Kirby Planet Robobot has a robot theme and because yes. of that they go all over the place same with like kirby in the forgotten land they got an actual theme going on with like what's going on there mm -hmm. um exactly i like it i just I, I i like having a theme and i think sunshine does very well with that though uh it's obviously a rushed game and it does have a couple blind spots with its design and it can get a little frustrating in many ways where other yeah. 3D Marios don't really have that, where they can get challenging, but they're not like so frustrating and so stupid. Sunshine will make you get really frustrated. Yeah, there's <laughs> a lot of, things. well not a lot, but there is a handful of shines that are obnoxious in Mario Sunshine. Yeah. I already listed off a couple, but there's also like the Watermelon Festival as an example. Uh, there's a lot of like, uh, the 100 coins also, that game did not need 100 coin shines. And there are so, What's really frustrating about that now? I just hate Mario Sunshine. <laughs> I'm thinking about it more. <laughs> I'm, that's what I'm saying. Like I, I don't, I don't view it immediately as like one of the worst 3D Mario's, but like something has to take that list. Something yeah. has to take that place. So like 3D Land is definitely the worst, and I still love that game. But like, what's following it up? I no, you're right. Sunshine. I think Sunshine. It has to. Yeah. Maybe the original of... 3D World. Maybe the original 3D World. But that's just because no. it's more basic. But I don't know. Even like 3D World, I like way more than 3D Land and Sunshine, just because you have different characters. All the levels are fun. It's way. It's just more enjoyable in general. Like it might not have as memorable of locations, because it does. Again, that game doesn't really have themes either. But like. It does a lot more with with what it has. Like, there's a lot more creative bosses and the cat power power, power up and stuff. You know, I don't know. I like the game a lot more. I think uh, I think its placement makes a lot of sense. I'm cool yeah. with it. Well, next up we have our final two games: the duology, yeah. if you will. That's right. Mario World and Yoshi's Island, and we've already placed the ports of these games uh, on the list. Now, Mario World, um, I think belongs in S tier. 
It kind of okay. depends on, like, you know, like, hey, what's better, Mario 3 or Mario World? And I don't know a lot of the time. I have a hard time picking. But you have a definitive choice. I mean, where would you put Mario World? Gonna hate me for this, but I would put Mario World in, like, A tier, not S tier. Uh, yeah, I was expecting that. I was I was almost saying, thinking, like, when you were saying you're gonna hate me for this, I'm like, oh, Jesus, D? S C? Yeah, F tier. Yeah, I don't, I don't like it. There's, a, like, Mario World does a lot of really cool things. It introduces Yoshi. The world map is awesome in Mario World. Um, I just don't like that they took out so many power-ups. Like, they don't have the Tanuki Tail again. You know, there's a lot of, um, a lot of power-ups that just didn't bring back. I don't like how short some of the levels are. Um, and I also am not a fan of... Some of the levels require you to find really weird shortcuts just to finish the game. Like, once you get to the, the Forest Illusion area, uh, one of the levels you have to, like, find a key, and then you have to, like... There's, like, a hidden spot you have to go to just to continue playing. Um, and some people might like that. I prefer my Mario games to be more straightforward than that, personally. And I also just don't like how Mario World controls. I mean, I think it controls fine, but I much prefer this, the satisfaction of building my own momentum and carrying on jumps that way. I do like how Mario World controls. I don't have a, a giant preference between that and Mario 3 in terms of controls. Um, Mario World does feel like a pretty, I don't know, just a slightly underwhelming successor to mario 3 it doesn't really feel like it ups the ante of mario 3 that much it it feels like it has a lot of upgrades but in more subtle ways outside of obviously the presentation i mean it does have a lot of upgrades but i feel like it also doesn't it's it's weird yeah i mean you have yoshi and the baby yoshis and and like the the the, the pea balloon and all of that I think Baby Yoshis were just in New Super Mario Bros. U. No, nah, they still have Baby Baby Yoshis in Mario World. They were oh, little, okay. They were they were they were different in that game though. Oh, you're right. Okay, yeah, I actually forgot about that. Yeah, I haven't played a lot of Mario World. Yeah, well, you also had like power ups for Yoshi, where like if you swallowed certain uh, shells, you could have get get Yoshi wings. Or, That's right. And, and breathe whatnot. fire. Yeah, so it's just like I I guess like those could kind of replace the power ups that were introduced in Mario 3, but it does feel mm -hmm. still lacking because, like, I don't know. I mean, like, Yoshi was a big deal. Yoshi was the big addition. Kind yeah. Of thing. And he was a big addition. I, I don't think we should undersell Yoshi's inclusion in Mario World. It's a core Mario character. Yeah. But I do feel like Mario 3 was a bigger step, was a bigger evolution. And it was even mm -hmm. more impressive because it was on the same console as Mario 1. And also, and Mario which... World. Oh, go on. Oh, I was just gonna say, and also, which game had a movie on it? Mario Three, yeah. not Mario World. <laughs> There's probably like I don't know. You, you, you might have been able to see like Mario World getting played in like some movie, like I don't know, like Terminator Two or something. I don't know. <laughs> but <laughs> like, a movie designed to promote yeah. Mario Bros. Three. That will never happen again. Where a movie literally shows off new gameplay of a video game. Like, yeah. Only Mario Bros. Three will help. <laughs> We'll achieve that. And it was very, it was just, it was a sensation back then. Where Mario World still was, it was a huge deal. I think you should put it in S tier, honestly. A low S though. I think, I think it belongs like low S. Because like, yeah, I love Mario World. This was like my childhood Mario, even though I played Mario 3 at like my grandma's house and Mario 1 at my grandma's house too. This was the one that I owned on the Game Boy Advance. And I mm. loved it. Um, but looking back at it, I, I change my opinion every day, pretty much. Not every day. I think that'd be a little weird, <laughs> but, uh, I just <laughs> like waking up Mario today and I'm today. just like, oh, I'm feeling Mario three today. It's just like, <laughs> you gotta, you gotta do like taxes today. <laughs> like, why are you thinking about this? I'm too busy thinking about Mario Bros. Deluxe being my favorite Mario game now. Yeah. The IRS, they, they don't take that excuse, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I think, I think the amount it added was very large to the mario franchise however i think mario 3's additions were more impressive and evolutionary at that time um mm. but the final game that we have to rank may not even be a mario game technically but yeah yoshi's island it should go right underneath the game boy advance port or above it i mean it depends i mean because i would probably say you know the original controls a little bit better and obviously you can see more of the screen but it has less in it like slightly less like there's still a lot of levels in the original game but I, yeah i i love yoshi's island i think it is an incredibly impressive game for like 
the SNES 1995. Like, yeah. it feels modern with how it's designed and just everything it does. I think it's incredible. I still think the final boss in Yoshi's Island is one of the best Mario bosses to exist. Like, yeah. the way that Bowser Jr. is built up to just be super massive and you have to hit him with eggs from, like, you know, miles away, or that's how it's perceived at least. You know, that's super, it's really, really cool. And, and again, that's super impressive on the SNES, too. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I love Yoshi's Island. Uh, I think we've talked about it enough via the uh, the Mario Advance version. Yeah. But, yeah, I think I think A makes sense. As much as I'd be willing to throw down an S, eh, I mean, it's mainline Mario, and, you know, like, I'm, I'm more willing to replay, like, Mario World or Mario 3 or, or any of the S games compared to uh, Yoshi's Island. It feels like the games in S tier are, like, yeah, these are amazing, and they're also incredibly replayable. Where like A tier are like, yeah, these are amazing, but like I don't, I don't like to replay them all the time. Like I feel like everything we put in A tier is a game that I want to replay like once every few years, compared to like every yeah. few months. Yeah, for sure. But uh, yeah, that's our ranking. Uh, all right. Tell us how. <laughs> tell us how that pisses you off. 